Hello, welcome back to the card review series. I'm here once again with Cranberry. The Rap God. The Rap God, yeah, sorry, Eminem. Marshall Mathers himself. Hello, uh, how's it going? Ah, uh, yes, hello. This is the last video. For the for the card reviews. Yeah, we'll probably do one for the relics and like the clanless cards. And like event What's cards. What's a review, I guess, for those more just like a just talking about them sort of thing? Yeah, I mean, we can review them, right? Why not? Who's gonna stop us? Good That's point. my question. It's a uh, good point. No one, no one can stop us at this point. Yeah, at this point it's too late, right? Like the video's already recorded. Mm -hmm. If you want to stop us, please travel back in time and join this Discord call and stop us right now. Alright, no one showed up. I guess we're good. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, shit. And... Oh, no, Schwarzenegger, hold on! <laughs> oh, God! You gotta okay. fight him off. Get to the chopper, dude. Okay, let's, 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 let's dive right into this. Alright. Uh, yeah, I don't think I have anything to say about any of the other videos. I guess without any further ado, talk about Rector. The final champion of Melting Remnant. So, you know, Rector's interesting. You got three very different archetypes on Rector. Can't really talk about Rector without talking about the unique mechanic to Melting, which is, of course, Burnout. Burnout's pretty straightforward. A unit with Burnout has as many turns as they have Burnout, and then at the end of the turn of like their last burnout they die so like rector in this case lives three turns it does not matter if he fights in combat or not that's basically it that's burnout um there you know there are ways to extend burnout in yep. the melting card pool it's of not course. it's not like a death sentence per se but it is something to keep in mind yeah I, i'd say resolve is also a unique mechanic is it no resolve isn't a unique mechanic although Oh, oh I mean, no, reform, no. Sorry, reform. My bad. Sorry. Reform is a unique mechanic, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Reform is pretty simple. Reform is just when you when reform triggers, you return a friendly unit who has died this combat to your hand, and they get enhanced with plus five, plus five, zero cost, and plus one to their burnout. This will either add one burnout to a unit who died who had zero stacks, or it will add one onto a unit who had burnout. So like, for example, if a unit typically has burnout two and then you reform them, they'll come back with burnout three. And then if you do it again, burnout four, etc., because it's an enhancement not uh, applied. Yep. Uh, important to note, it's a little weird with reform, right? Every single unit that you play is its own instance. So for example, like, if you play Rector with Burnout, he dies, you reform him, and then you try to reform again while the the Rector that you originally reformed is on the field, you can't reform a second one, right? If that makes sense. Yeah, it's not like there's two copies of his body in your discard pile. It's yeah. Like, it's, he comes back. Yeah. The, the, we, the, the Morsel card Wretch had a, sim, had a similar nuance to it, but mm -hmm. yeah, that nuance is there. It's important to know as well. When you reform a unit, you can't, like, reform multiples of a single unit. Don't think that way, even though it may seem that you can think that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, how do you feel about Rector as a whole? Um, I think that, you know, I, I like Burnout a lot just for the fact that it lets you take every trial in the early game, more yes. or less. Especially if, in your starting card pool, you get any single Burnout uh, extender. Um... You can basically do everything. Um, the other two do not have that immediate punching power that he has in the early game. Mm. Um, I may argue for Harvest Rector having that sort of punching power. As long as he gets the Harvest started, he can kind of go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a lot of he bosses. Have, he, he, he can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with bosses, but not units very well. Yeah, but like, uh, in the early game, Burnout Rector doesn't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with bosses either. Or, he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with bosses, but he has the same problem that Harvest Rector does, except this one just kills heavies. And yeah, that's if, a good thing. But like as you pointed out, you kind of opened my eyes to this. If a heavy sneaks through on you, it's only four damage. That's true. Except that's for true. like if you like juiced up an incant heavy, right? Mm -hmm. but or like, if you but... took the uh, the what's it called the yeah. plus four damage one, etc. etc. Yeah. Like, he, he like I think my point still stands that he bet he lets you take more or less any trial and it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, the only one that you really have to stop and think about with Burnout Rector is the invasion trial, and even that one's yes. not that big of a deal. So you can put him on floor three if you want to for the invasion trial. If you know. if you put him on floor three, he's gonna burn out before enemies get up to him though. In the inv invasion, invasion specifically. 
Yeah, yeah, but like still, he, he can tank all the damage basically that they'll that they'll have. Put like a train suit behind them, and it'll be knocking off quite a few boys before they get there. Although well, they'll be days. It is an issue. It is an issue with the boss. And and I also there they will be days. So that first round of combat. That is know. true as well. So you just set it up second floor, but same 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 thing. The big thing to point out about uh, burnout, point out about burnout rector. Well, first of all, his stats. He's a 60-60 at the at the out the gate. 85-85, 150-150. Uh, the only time uh, he he one shots all heavies at the start, and then he needs a little help, but will punch through a big chunk of heavy health at level two and three. But you'll notice he's always burnout three. If you start with burnout rector and you play him turn one, he will always burn out before the boss spawns on you. Without any help. Yeah, if you, so if you don't have any help. So this is something that's important to keep in mind if you're taking Burnout Rector. You have to be ready to do something else to the bosses. Now, the early bosses do die in three rounds against Burnout Rector. Mm -hmm. If you have any way to manipulate his Burnout, he's great. Honestly, you might just always take this if it's offered. I'm still kind of on the fence on that one or not. I, I, I favor it over Harvest, but there is definitely... Like, Harvest can also do some great stuff. I will not deny that either. Yeah, what she I think, said. I think, I think he has more end game applications. Yeah. On his setup. Well, I, I typically use Rector as just like, I use this with a little assistance to punch through heavies. He's the heavy killer, and then I put something on the bottom floor to kill backline for me. But, you know, I think that the big problem that early game Harvest has is that early game Harvest, as you said, heavies bleed through, and if unless you have like a really strong start, like you get a lot of Harvest triggers on him, he will not kill bosses because he needs to go 15 rounds on his own to kill a boss. In the early game. Also, if you're playing Harvest Rector and you're playing something like uh, Umbra, for example, it's a pretty cool combo to constantly feed him morsels and stuff. Yeah. But then how on earth are you killing the backline? You're not. You know, it, yeah, exactly. You're not going to. You, not you, at the you, game. You, you need your supporting clan. Like, if you're a Hellhorn, you can play Torches to kill the backline. That's great. Harvest Rector, or, or Harvest Flicker, or Har Harvest Rector does pretty well then, but like, then he doesn't have the morsels. Yeah. He... He needs, like, Harvest Rector definitely needs help. It's weird because he's, like, a, he's a big tank, but also he needs something to sit in front of him to, like, get him started. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the best thing to pair with him, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hypothesize this one. I think maybe your best bet is to put, stick him with an endless hot shark. That's pretty cool. That's, that's just off the top, but, you know, mm -hmm. uh, basically, we didn't even, we haven't even touched on Reform Rector, and that's because at level 1 he's a 10-10. Reform a random unit is really, really weak at the start of the game, especially yeah. if you're playing with Morsels. He's like, 10-10, reform, reform 2 units, and he's a 20-20 at level 2, Reform 3 units, and 40-40 at level 3. He's, he's weak. Especially early. Like, he's, he, re Reform is a cool ability, and when it works, it works really well. But it's just not very reliable, with uh, especially in the early game. But there's probably better ways to do it in the mid to late game than dedicate your champion to doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. It, like, it is an interesting setup. I used to do it a lot on Lower Covenant, where I would just take Reform Rector, I would smack him on the top floor, I would just spam dregs and t train stewards throughout the train, and then, you know, I would have an end, basically an endless supply of units. However, you know, if you are playing this, you don't want to play this with Umbra, because you're going to be randomly reforming yourself a lot of morsels, but also that's not terrible, but, like, having your champion be a one morsel generator isn't great, to be fair. And note that when units reform, they do reform with Burnout 1. So this is an important thing basically entirely for the the two Burnout Relics. The Exploding Candle that does 5 damage when a Burnout unit dies. Reform is pretty good off of him for that because you can basically just get a 5 damage AoE every turn. And uh, they'll also come back with 4 Burnout instead of 1 if you have the Burnout plus 3 on application. I mean, realistically, we, we want reform hitting units that already have burnout so they don't die instantly, though. That's, yeah. what, that's, what, you, that's what you want to have happen, and then very often this will instead get one of like, your other clan cards back with burnout and it just dies that turn. Yeah, I mean, probably the most important thing with reform rector, if you're really going to commit to it, is you got to give it a train stewards. Hitting train stewards feels bad. And like, you know, reforming... I think I think you're supposed to reform tomb units. I think that's what the main like the main idea behind this is, is you're supposed to grab this and you're supposed to just reform like entombed explosives every turn. And that's kind of cool. 
I've always thought of it more when I when I theory crafted it being like, okay, let me just keep getting back these drafts and they keep getting plus five attack each time and they last longer. And they had multi strikes, so they're making better use of that attack boost. But I can see it also to be to get to, uh, the 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 tone be- Venus back and just keep you know playing them and letting them die. Yeah, and uh, I think the other things that we need to know reform doesn't reform cardless units. So if you have a unit that's spawned from something, like say I don't know, how about the tomb that pops out two drafts? You can't reform those from as far as I'm aware. Okay. And. The reform on Rector, since it's a resolve effect, it'll reform in a very- it reforms after he goes in combat. This ordering is important, so like, if you're slapping Rector on the top floor, he's always gonna reform before the other two floors of combat resolve, which is a minor uh, thing to keep an eye on for. If you, if you want to, you know, reform a unit that's dying that turn, you need to play him on the first floor. Yeah. More or less. Yeah, it's like he'll reform a unit that dies if they die in front of him on his floor, and and then other than that, like, that's it, right? He doesn't always reform them, but like if you have no units that have died, and you have a unit dying this round, but he's above them on the train, he will not reform the unit after they die, because he will also have already gone. And if you're playing him top four, he will not reform on the first round of combat, because resolve does not trigger on the first round. Yep. Uh, also, because uh, he's dazed. Yeah, because he's dazed. Yeah, um, yeah, that, yeah, I misspoke. You're correct. I, I, I think the biggest weakness that uh, that reform as a mechanic just has in general is that it is a random unit. Mm-hmm. Do you think that it would be better if it was like the most recent unit that died? That no, because then plan around it more. I, I don't think it would be better that way. I think that it would just be like you would spend too much time trying to min max. Like, oh well, my the wrong unit dies this round and we just lose, right? I think keeping it random is fine, especially when you get up to two and three units around. How often are you really going to have three units to reform, right? This is where I think it's kind of weird. What are you I, doing? I think it doesn't happen never because you have all the uh, the dregs. Yeah, but like that sucks. That sucks. I know, I think it was not fun. It's not fun to reform uh, dregs over and over again. It's like maybe over the course of a combat they get up to like 30 attack. Who uh, my, my overall thoughts on Rector is like, you take Burnout or Harvest and I pretty much never take Reform. But that's good because you'll always have one of the two that is good. Yeah. Harvest requires a little more thinking. Yeah. And planning. Re- a burnout is just, you know, me Rector, me Smash. Yeah. And you... it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to play and I, he's... I, I think he might be the strongest champion. Yeah, with a little support, right? On yeah. Like, standing alone, Burnout Rector is arguably the weakest, but with a little support from his clan cards, he's definitely one of the strongest, right? I've had... I, I mean, we could go into how many different crazy runs have I streamed of Rector at this point, right? Eight yeah. multi-strike, because I cleared his Burnout, and he's a 180 doing eight multi-strike, you know? Just... He's, he's a really strong unit because he answers one of those three questions. He's the how do you kill heavies as long as you give him some support. Throw him down with a Lady of the Reformed, pick up a Wickless Recruitment, just pick up a few Burnout yeah, there's, extensions. There's, there's, there's pretty easy ways to like more or less permanently solve Burnout on Rector. Yeah. And that makes him pretty strong. The, the biggest fear, the biggest thing they have to think about, because I've had a lot of combats where I'm like, oh yeah, we definitely win this, right? And I don't actually do the math, and the boss will have like a thousand health, and my Rector will have like, I don't know, six burnout, and it goes, oh, my Rector can't finish this off because he's going to burn out. Like, that's typically what kills him. He has such huge raw stats that he wins almost every 1v1. You just gotta watch his burnout. And you gotta be very prepared for it with the boss combat. I don't think I showed off the Harvest Rector, by the way. He's a 10-15 with plus 5, a 15-25 with plus 10, and then a 30-50 with plus 20 health on the Harvest. Like the the last rector for harvest is like oh boy yeah that's that very strong that, that guy, guy is a very strong boy oh man that guy right he's gonna be harvesting a lot that guy is yeah. beefy but it's getting like, there, it's very easy to give him like you know 300 hp yeah but getting to this point is hard yes it, it have, you have to you have to set up correctly for it you have to live through fell with harvest rector at a you know not optimal uh level is the big thing right he's not the greatest yeah uh anything else you want to say about rector no all right let me write down the timestamp here as we go to the common cards all right common cards of the melting remnant uh we get to start off with their starter card which is right up front we don't even have to go out of order here we can just go right in order how nice 
Uh, the starter for Melting Remnant is the Dreg. Zero energy, one space. He's a unit, nine attack, three health, burnout two. He's great. I know. Yeah, he's he's pretty good for a starting card. He's probably I, the I, best I know, starting card. I still like Restore more, but it's close for me. They're both good. They're both no doubt good, and like, it's a unit. Yeah. The starting card's a unit, right? It, it it's good. It, it takes up only one space. One space, yeah. It, it does it does burn out, but honestly, on this guy, burnout's not even that big of an issue because by the time you get to like the mid-ish game, you don't want them taking up space because you're trying to deploy your units, you know, correctly, and they'll probably they'll they'll often die or they'll take a hit for you similar to how imps do like yeah you, it's you like you use them efficiently they they have three health so they die to pretty much everything like yeah there's like maybe three enemies in the game that don't insta kill dregs right some of the early heavies don't but for the most part you play a dreg and in the early game you play a dreg he gives you nine damage for the first two combats right in those first two round in those first two fights dreg is just 18 damage over two rounds you throw him down behind your rector or behind a train steward he does good damage uh and then in the mid game even if you have like you you, you can remove other things very confidently while just knowing that dreg removes himself and a lot of times You'll have, I don't know, say Harvest Rector. You can just throw the dregs down in front of him and they'll burn out on their own and feed him health, even if yeah. they don't get killed naturally. I think that's their biggest strength is that they can just feed Harvest units for yeah, you. Yeah, that's also a good part. It really just feels, when you, when you look at it, you can, you can kind of compare it to uh, Frozen Lance in that, like, you know, it does nine damage to the front enemy versus Frozen Lance doing six. However, Frozen Lance A costs a card. Yeah. Uh, B, dregs can, you know, take a hit for someone if you need them to, and they also feed harvest. They're just much more, they're flexible, they do more damage, they cost less, they're a unit that only takes up one space, they have all these built-in synergies with uh, the melting as well, they're just... And probably the, mo the most important thing, they cost zero. Yeah. And, like, this is, this is one where I almost want to go into the relics just for a minute, because, like... There's so many relics that drag synergize well with. In Melting, there's Flicker's Liquor when you play a unit, cry, make another card in your hand, cause zero for the turn. Dregs are free units that just make another card free in that case. There's the Hell's Banners where you play two units, you get three energy. Mm -hmm. You have a bunch of free drags that just generate you more energy. Like they're so they're yeah. so efficient with a lot of relics. The there's, burnout. There's one you mentioned before the burnout relic. Yeah, where the it does burnout five relic. damage when burnout units die. They're they're now they're now scorching it. Yeah, but better. Yeah, but better. But like, just um, straight up better. They they do a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, dregs. I um, I think they're S tier without a doubt. You want to give the, your final clan card tier list S I, through I D. I still I still put it at A tier. All I right. Restore a little bit more. You're allowed to. Good. And one thing I want to mention that you that I told you to make sure I didn't forget, and you did forget. Of course. Well, I, I guess I guess maybe we talked. I said don't let me forget during the relic uh, section. So I guess you didn't really, but. Important to note that uh, if you are melting, dregs will ruin you if you take sketches of salvation. Oh yeah. Do if you that relic will just it won't work. <laughs> it does not work. Yeah, it's honestly it's pretty nice because I don't like sketches of salvation, so now I have a reason to not take it. I, I like sketches. I but, don't. But not with melting. Not with melting at all because it fills up your fourth floor with like three dregs, and you're just like oh. I, mean, I, wanted, even, I wanted three consumers of crowns here. What's going on? Yeah, it's like, you know, you can take it and then it just burns out a bunch of your cards for you and you just don't build around it. No, no it's, it's not good. Don't yeah, do it. Bad. It's a bad option. So my, my tier list, drag is the S tier. A tier is going to go to restore. B tier for torch. C tier for shade splitter. And then F tier for Stygian frozen lance. But like you can interchange Frozen Lance and Shade Splitter, I think. Yeah, I think they're pretty close to. I I would go Restore S, Dreg, uh, A, and then, mm, yeah, I guess I go Torch B. You know, I'm surprised. I actually think you know when I when we first started this, I was like, I don't know if, if Torch is like B tier, maybe even C tier. But yeah, I'll put Torch at B, and then Frozen Lance and Shadow Shadow Splitter are like tied. Yeah, and if we weren't doing the restricting each one to its own tier, I would definitely say Dragon Restore go together in S tier, Torch goes alone in B tier, and then yeah. Shade Splitter and Lance both go in F tier. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, I actually like that better. 
Yeah. Let's let's go with that. Cause like I think that I think that the power levels are about equal, but you know, s situationally each card has its use in this game, with the exception of Pyre Grow. You can make almost every card in this game good, aside from Pyre Grow. Hey, hey, don't don't forget Ritual of Battle. <laughs> Look, fucking someone told me. I think it was Neo said in chat the other day. He had a great Ritual Battle run where he just made it free from the Winged event and made it give him thirty five gold, and then he tripled it, and he went, "Wow, yeah. this is a great card." Yeah, but you know. <laughs> Any three cost card that you make free and give you 35 gold every turn is going to be good. It could do nothing. It could be zero cost, give you 35 gold. That would yeah. be an amazing card. Yeah. Okay, well, huh? let, let's move on to real cards now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drag out of here. Up next, zero energy spell. Consume, apply burnout three to friendly burnout units. Hollow drippings. It's fine. Yeah, this is maybe my favorite card to see in my starting deck if I get uh, burnout rector. I think, uh, but, there, but there are better cards still than Hollow Drippings as well. I think Purifying uh, Cleanse is better to start with than Hollow yes, Drippings. Yes, I agree. I agree as well. But like, I'm so happy to see Hollow Drippings because I'm like, I'm like, oh man, Burnout Rector needs something. Yeah, <laughs> needs so something to give him a little bit more burnout. It's interesting because when you look at this, when when you look at all these common cards together, because you get two common cards, like you get you get two of one common card. Half of these cards are good for Burnout Rector. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really recognize that. Basically, every time that I open up a new run and I don't see Molten Encasement, I go, oh, thank God. Yeah. When when we're talking about, like, all of these cards are pretty good except for one of them, in my opinion. I'm going to spoil it. But uh, Hollow Drippings is a good card if you're going Burnout. It applies it to all Burnout units on the floor, which is good. Burnout 3 is three more rounds. That is a lot of time at all yeah. times in the game. It's either the time to... Uh, like hold you over to your next burnout answer or it's enough time to just finish the fight this card makes that consume like get a random consumable card this is the reason that you never take melting remnant though mm -hmm. most commonly it's, not, it's not that good it's not that good of a card like it like the issue is that there's like cards like uh the wax lady whose name yeah. i actually forget, lady of the reformed like, yeah there's there's ways to like more efficiently put way more burnout on your units yeah, well, should... hollow drippings. If it didn't yeah. consume, maybe it would be. I don't. It would be close to being better than purifying cleanse. But I don't think even then it'll be much better. No, because the the big thing is hollow drippings is a card that you take for burnout rector. You don't take this for the rest of your burnout units, right? You're not playing hollow drippings on the like lady of the house. That's not that's not what you're losing your mind over, right? You're not committing to burnout unless you have burnout rector, in my opinion. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is a card that you take in like four one or four two when it's like, am I gonna get Lady of the Reformed? I don't know. Better yeah, take this yeah. just to be sure, right? You're not throwing this down and like, oh thank God my dregs live for an extra three rounds. Oh we're saved. It's not that. Yeah. Card's fine though. Just don't take the Melting Remnant Consume event because of Hollow Drippings is what you're gonna get because this is the common Consume card and this is worthless outside of this clan. Yeah. Uh, anything else? No. All right. Up next, zero energy spell. Restore 10 health and apply burnout 2 to a friendly unit. Purifying cleanse. And this is definitely someone getting bathed in wax and nothing else. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I've been forced to think about that. Okay. Uh, this card's good. Yeah, you know, same thing as Hollow Drippings. You take this if you're playing Burnout Rector and you don't have a burnout answer yet. There are better right. answers. It's, all, it's also just probably... You know, like we did more or less say it, but it is overall just a better card because it does not consume. Yeah, uh, it does only apply burnout too. Here's here's an important thing to note: you can use this on a unit that does not have burnout, and they will die in two rounds. There are times where this is good. Yeah, if they need that ten health to survive, you know, it's like, oh hey, you know, they're gonna die, but they'll live a little bit longer than they yeah. would without the heal. Or you can just use it like, oops, I, I put, like, I want this train steward down, but I can't put them somewhere they're going to die. You could play him and then throw Purifying Cleanse on him so he burns out in time. And then the space is freed up, right? Or, you know, play it on a tomb to kill the tomb. Many things you can do. It's good. Yeah. Uh, anything else about Purifying oh, Cleanse? Man. Why did you tell me this about the art? <laughs> it's not my fault, man. It if is I... your fault. I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know. I, look, I've had like 1,500 people call this card the blank card, where you can fill in the blank. Actually, these videos aren't demo these, these videos aren't monetized anyway. I'm not getting demonetized. Everyone calls this the Bukake card. I, I think it's more like a golden shower if you ask me, but you know. Uh, it's, you know, it's white. It's semantics. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's not something that we, we need to be thinking about. Up next, one energy. 
10 attack, 5 health, 1 capacity, burnout 1, multi strike 1, the giraffe, aka the draft. That's weird. Yeah, there's like. I mean, burnout 1, right? Yeah, burnout 1. Burnout 1. Like, he dies the turn you play him. Yes. Do not play this unit on the top floor unless you know what you are doing. <laughs> like you have some sort of strategy because he will be dazed, he will do nothing, he will die. Is, will is, sad. is playing a draft on the top floor the best possible case for Wickless recruitment? Probably. I don't think so. All right. You can be wrong. Uh, draft is cool. I, I've i thought, in the past, up until I got to Covenant 25 and saw the big buff they did to Seraph on Covenant 25, I thought Draft was an S-tier incredible card. You can win everything with this. However, this card does not win you the game, typically. The upside is he's one space and he's a multi-strike one unit, so you can sneak in like four or five of this guy. And he has five health, so he avoids most sweep units outside of Sower of Sorrows and High Priest of the Light. However, this guy doesn't do enough damage. There's not enough ways to buff his attack. Yeah, it's 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 tough. Yeah. They're just kind of like you know, if you're if you're playing Lady of the Reformed and Burnout Rector, you can sneak one or two in in the in the in the room with them, and then that's kind of neat. Yeah. But other I, than that, they have no real other use case. Yeah, it's I I would argue that the best use case for draft is not by picking the card draft. Absolutely not. Yeah, there's other ways to get them that are pretty cool. Yeah, we'll talk about it when we get there, but like, as it sits, I think I used to think Draft could hard carry you. I have decided now that Draft does not hard carry anymore. He is, you know, it's too risky too. If you draw this guy before your burnout plans, he just dies. Uh, yeah, you can't use him. You gotta wait till you get your burnout extender first. Yeah, maybe maybe a draft, like maybe a plan of like three drafts that burn out a bunch of times and you just keep auto reforming them with Reform Rector as a good plan. Yeah, but that sounds reform, they're good they're one of the best candidates for reforming just because yeah. reform gives them that plus five which is plus ten because they have multi-strike and then it also extends their burnout so they don't die on the first turn yeah that's cool that is cool i don't know how good that is for for the end game yeah it it, it, it seems a little weak realistically i think these guys the, the thing is maybe you're supposed to take two tanks with drafts like maybe they need just two big things in front of them so that and you can still fit a similar number as like you can fit with multi-strike three lady for example mm -hmm. but i don't know it's tough maybe you can take some space but I, 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 it is it is i've had times where i've gotten like lady of the reformed and i've just stacked up like five four or five drafts behind her that all have like plus 20 times two and Seraph just still just kills lady of the reformed too quickly before they can kill him yeah and that... they get wiped that's the big problem, right? They, the only tank that they can play with is Lady of the Reformed, and Ooh, she's good. not tanky. Ooh, she's good, but she's not, like, super tanky. She doesn't yeah. have that uh, that sustaining healing that, like, the Awoken has. She doesn't have the best. Like, she's got pretty good numbers, but she doesn't have the best numbers as far as, like, just being a big beef t uh, beefcake. So it's, it's, it's just... It's tough. It's, it's tough, yeah. All right. Up next, one energy, zero attack, five health, extinguish. Is this the first unit with extinguish? I think so. Also one capacity. Deal 35 damage to the front enemy unit. Extinguish triggers on death. This is entombed explosives. Probably um, the best tomb. That or Harvester of Souls, but I guess that's that's close. Harvester of Souls? The 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 rare. The rare tomb boy. They like get souls for each uh Oh that guy fucking tomb. sucks, are you kidding me? I mean, he doesn't suck, but I Spoiler think... Spoiler alert for the rare review section. He's not the worst. He's... <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll argue about that when we get there. How do you feel about Entombed Explosives? Um, Entombed Explosive is okay. Yeah, this is the best tomb. Like, this guy's great to start with, I think. Yeah, yeah, really? definitely, definitely good early game. Falls uh, you, off late game, but very good early game. You might want to even consider taking Reform Rector and just making this guy your early game plan, right? Maybe? I don't know. I haven't tried that. If you I, I, if you don't get Burnout Rector, maybe you take Reform Rector, you take Entombed Explosives, you just trigger a bunch of explosives and win the game with that. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's, that's a lot of explosives to win, my dude. Yeah, you're right. You know, you win the early game and then you get a good unit, like, I don't know, uh, Dreg, to win you the game. Okay. 
Yeah, it seems right. But yeah, like you can you can make some stuff happen with it, right? You can just load up a top floor room if you get four of these guys. Just load up an explosives room and it'll just kill some bosses in the early game. Things like that. It's fun to think about, but in reality, I think this thing's best use case is just like throw it down, tanks a hit, and it pops a heavy for you typically in the early game, and then you get rid of it because it never does more than thirty-five. Yeah, that's his big problem. There's no way to scale this effect, right? That's a big killer. You can scale up attack on many units. You can't scale this guy's 35. Well, you have, like, the card that ex that triggers extinguish, I think, right? Yeah, but then he's, what, doing 70? I'm just saying, you asked him as a way to increase the damage. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you're still doing 35. You're just doing 35 an extra time. Yes. So you're doing, you know. Sure. You got me. It's oh. not great, though. It's no. not amazing. Good early, falls off. Yeah. Uh, up next, unless you wish to continue. I'm good. Alright. One energy spell. Reform a unit. Molded. This card's good. Can we time out for one second? I'm sorry, but okay, I just on. actually looked at Entombed Explosive closely. Uh -huh. Is that an imp inside of him? I think it's just a bomb. You think it's a bomb? I think it might be like a, a an imp. I'm pretty sure that's a bomb. Okay, whatever. Look at, look at, the, look at the little like pieces of gear. That's a big ol' bomb. Oh, it's probably one of Daedalus' bombs, you're right, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's he's been dripped around a Daedalus bomb. Okay. What an idiot. Yeah, that's uh, pretty stupid. Molded is a good card. Uh, this is a really, really, really strong start for Burnout Rector, is because you can just draw this and bring him back a second time. Uh, basically all I ever use this on is Burnout Rector, though, to be fair. Throw Permafrost on it. It's also very easy to reform other units instead of Burnout Rector, so keep that in mind. No, it's not, because this doesn't do random. Oh, it doesn't do random? No, this is target. Oh my god. You pick the unit. I, okay, never mind. I'm, I'm a dummy. Okay. I, I also thought this was going to reform a random unit, and then I played it for the first time, and I went, oh, I get to choose. So yeah, you just, you just permafrost this, and then you bring back whatever your key unit is, right? You kill off your Lady of the Reformed or your Rector right before a big encounter, and you bring them back, and it goes nuts. Or, you know, you use it to bring back an Entombed Explosives and get an extra 35 damage out of it, bring back a Draft that died, and you get an extra turn of his life, plus he gets plus 5, plus 5. You know, those you use it for that thing, those things, basically. Yeah. You not can... I was good in Relentless Fights because it'll, you know, still burn out. Yeah. But usually Burnout Rector will kill uh, before it burns out still. If yeah, like, like, in those early fights, fights, for sure. Mm-hmm. He, he beats almost every boss in three rounds, I'm pretty sure, and four, one, and two. And if he doesn't, you know, just draw Molded again. Easy. Yeah. But yeah, uh, Molded's good. Uh, you can also use this on other, like, non, non burnout units. You could use this on a non-clan unit, even just to squeeze out a little extra effect from them if you really, really need to. But that's probably dire circumstances. Although, you know, combo that with a card we will be talking about later. You can do some cool stuff there. Anyway, but like a lot of synergies that go, like a lot of synergies in Melting that you have to talk about, right? Yeah. A lot of these cards almost, really work well together. almost a little bit of like the same issue that Umbra has where it's like uh, their synergies often have issues working outside of their own clan. Yes. Right? Like it's bad to reform other units because they'll come back with Burnout 1. Yes, I agree. But you can, you can, if you really want to, just keep reforming that same uh, other unit. You can bring back uh, Animus over and over again. It'll have like burnout five maybe by the end of the uh, the combat, but that's you know plus twenty five attack. Yeah, I have had some runs where I just had to reform a train steward like four times, and he turned into some monstrosity. But yeah, lots of lots of interesting synergy within melting. Up next, one energy, zero attack, five health, one space, extinguish, apply stealth one to friendly units, molten encasement. So when this thing dies, it gives it gives everything else on the floor one stealth, which means that the, everything else on the floor is not a target for this round of combat. Would you say that? Would you say this is this is Melting's uh, ritual of battle? No, I think this is worse than ritual of battle. I agree. This card's like really bad. Yeah. The worst the worst thing about it is it's one energy and it takes up a space where Melting it may not look it, but like you do have in your starting deck like. What is it? It's going to be 13 space that you need to play to play out all your units. Actually, 15 counting your champion if your champion is Rector, right? Because you got five space to give to Dregs, eight for train stewards, and two for your champion. And this this takes up like valuable space in the early game to do nothing. Yeah. It's like 
you're saving, you maybe you get like a drag to have an extra round and then it just burns out anyway, right? And the, t the hit that the molten encasement tanked was enough to keep it alive. So the early yeah. game application is worthless. There's, and... there's, def there's definitely a big anti-synergy here with burnout in that uh, one of your premier uh, burnout strategies, uh, Lady of the Reform, wants to get hit mm -hmm. and this stops her from getting hit, which is not good. Yeah. <laughs> It's very, easy, it's very easy to avoid damage with her and then cause like you know your drags or drafts or whatever's behind them to then just burn out yeah. because you you didn't realize oh the next round was the brief respite and then it's just like oh you you're dead yeah you died <laughs> all you do is burn out right before the boss show up yep yeah. and then you go whoops haha <laughs> this card's really bad like this is the worst common in this set and yeah. it is like very close to just like the worst common in the game in my opinion like ritual battles pretty bad let's do a quick let's do a quick walkthrough ritual battles pretty bad i don't think any of the awoken cards really take it like maybe energy siphon yeah, I, think, I think molten case might be better than power grow though yeah yeah but that's an uncommon okay worst common Got worst you. common like this card is competing with like perils of production for worst card in the game i would or worst common in the game we can we can give an official worst and best common at the end of the I comments. Think at least has somewhere it belongs. This has kind of just belongs nowhere. Yeah, this card belongs. I mean, it belongs somewhere. It's in the trash. I really what's hate it. That, what's that he's got inside him? Smoke. That's not smoke, dude. That's uh, smoke. I'm telling you, that's a that's a that's a belly full of something. Please, please, uh, reference purifying cleanse. Oh shit! Is this the before and after picture? <laughs> Oh god. Next up, Next up, yeah, Wicklash. Uh, one energy spell, enhance a friendly unit with plus five attack, and apply burnout to. Uh, so, you know, only difference between this and Purifying Cleanse in my mind is that Wicklash costs one and Purifying Cleanse costs zero. I don't really care about that plus um, five. I think, I think drafts like it. Yeah, but like... Eh. That's it, that's it. If you have like drafts, this is it better, I guess. They're a good target for it. But yeah, yeah you're you're playing this for the burnout application basically. When when offered Purifying Cleanse or Wicklash, if I'm taking Wicklash because I'm going, well, I really need that plus five for my drafts, what that means is my rector is not burnout, which means that we're going some weird burnout harvest hybrid, which means that we're in trouble. Yeah, that's definitely a, tr a true fact. Because Purifying Cleanse is definitely better for Rector. If you, if you extend his burnout enough, he will eventually just die. He does have 60 health to refill, and he doesn't need plus 5 very often. I, I, I agree. That's it. That's all I have to say about Wicklash. How about you? Um, I just realized that is a that is a draft. Or is that a draft? Or a, that's a drag in the yard. That's a drag. Know. Yeah. As a drag being like, I don't know, getting his, he's like halfway dead, and then someone's like, here, live a little longer, except you don't have any legs, so enjoy just standing, or like melting here in place, idiot. Yeah. Kinda rude, to be honest. Finally, two energy, spell, descend a unit, gripfall. It's a pretty good one. Yeah, I mean take this right like you take one of these yeah. there's a lot of applications all, all, all of the the unit movement cards are pretty cool they all love permafrost mm -hmm. this one like the cost reduction as well i'd say you know moving yeah. it two to one is pretty nice it's it's interesting that this card costs two and ascending a unit costs one probably because descending unit has a much more defensive application than ascending yeah unit. exactly yeah like you know Ascend is moving an enemy potentially closer to your pyre, whereas Dripfall is moving them farther away. Yeah. This is good. That's it. Like, that's all I have to say. Moving like moving it. units and controlling the battlefield that way is good. Taking this is always good. Like, I'm never upset to start with this. I'm never upset to pick one of these up early on. It's a why not card. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, it, like, basically, you may be like me, where you're you're sitting there and you're going, oh, ascending and descending unit, I don't need it. I can just play smart. What I have found is that, like, just take one of these, and in the worst case, it's just an extra card in your deck, and in the best case, sometimes this just, like, actually saves your life. You get to drop down a, a unit into the boss combat that tips the scales, you get to drop an enemy unit, and then you take, like, 15 less damage from them. If you're trying to be like, oh, I'm way too smart for this card, I'll never need to move my units around because I am perfect, think about it this way. Think about all the cool, smart plays you can do using Dripfall on your enemies, then, at the very least, right? Like, yeah. you, can, you can separate people still. You can you can over over capacity a room with it. it, it it's, still, it's still a good card. 
for that yeah. stuff. So. Drip falling tanks is really good because it moves tanks to the back of the room that they get dropped into and they become worthless as a result. The zero attack boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good card. I think that's it, right? I just realized that whiplash is a pun. Yeah, it's like whiplash, right? One of the few puns outside of imp-based cards. Yeah. It makes me angry. <laughs> hey, what can I say? Uh, overall feelings about the Melting Remnant commons? I mean, we've basically talked about it, like, Molten Encasement, Trash Bad, mm -hmm. Draft, a little sketchy, but the rest of them uh, are good if you are Burnout Rector or uh, just good in general. Yeah, it's like, if you're not playing Burnout, about half of these cards are not takeable. And actually, if you're not playing Burnout, I would argue that six of these cards are just a hard ignore. Right? The only cards you could even consider if you're not playing Burnout, in my opinion, are Entombed Explosives and Dripfall. But as Melting, you're probably playing Burnout. Mm -hmm. And it's fine. Uh, would you like to give an award worst common in the game? Would you like to give that a momentary thought? Um, I mean, I, I would take me too long to think about it, but I think Molten Encasement is up there. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you I'll give you my list of potential answers to worst common in the game. I, 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 cl I clicked through all of the clans. Ritual of Battle. Okay. I think in Awoken there is nothing worth considering, like maybe Sting, but I think Sting is fine even. Okay. Uh, Energy Siphon from Stygian, but I've had good results with Energy Siphon as well, so okay. I wouldn't give it to Energy Siphon. Perils of Production from Umbra. Okay. And Molten Encasement. And I think Molten Encasement takes it easily. Yeah, yeah I'll, t I'll go, I'll agree. 100%. Yeah. Molten, molten Encasement. Like, it's gotta be, right? I was gonna say Best as well. We could do Best, but I think Best is so subjective. And by that, I yeah. mean it's Wildwood Sap. Yeah, I'll, also, I actually agree with that too, probably. It's like, it's Wildwood Sap or it's maybe Space Prism. I'll go Wildwood Sap over it still. And, but like, call, best and worst in the game, like, be, worst in the game is pretty easy to do, Molten Encasement, you can just look at cards that are like, what is this card here for? Best in the game is a little more situational, because it's like, Wildwood Sap is great in yeah. the context of playing regen, and it just straight yeah. up wins you the game in that context, but, mm -hmm. you know, outside of that context, it's not great. I agree. I, I would still say Wildwood Sap, though, there, it's one of the few cards that I'll always duplicate five times if I already have one. Alright. I think that closes the chapter on these commons. Let me put us down here. That is the timestamp. Ah. All right, on to the uncommons. Here we are. The un excuse me. The uncommons. You okay, there, boys. I am all right. Okay. Uh, starting us off here. Zero energy spell. Trigger a unit's extinguish ability without killing it. Intent on death. This card, well, let me, me, three days ago, Intent on Death, why would you ever play Intent on Death? This card. There's, there's, a, there's a specific reason when you take this card, yes. it's a pretty good one. The, you do not take this card for the tombs. And honestly, I think we should just wait and talk about Intent on Death when we get to the card that we play this card with, right? Yeah, sure. We'll, yeah. we'll say right now, trash unless you have this one card more yeah. or less, because most of the entomb effects, or, the, or, or yeah, most of the extinguish effects just like don't do enough to make having a card in your deck worth it yeah uh one i guess one thing to note about this because there's one little bit of nuance here that has been pointed out to me that i've never gotten to do this does read trigger a unit's extinguish ability without killing it not a friendly unit you can use this on enemies namely you can use this on the collector to get free money Oh yeah, no some wow, point that I realize it. That's pretty cool. I like yeah, that yeah. more. So if you if you have it on turn two, you get to just kill or like you just get to get an extra free X amount of gold from the collector. I've never gotten to do it, but you can you can also use this on like sick of fans to increase enemy attack, I guess, if you want to. But like really the only enemy you ever want to use this on is of course Mr. Collector. That's it. We'll come back to this card in the future. Up next. Zero energy. Consume. Gain one energy for each friendly unit di that has died in this battle. Memories of the Melted. I think this card is meant to be played with Umbra. Yeah. This is this is meant to be like, oh, uh, I've given either this or my good X cost card Permafrost. We are now at the end of our combat, and I can now you play this to gain 20 energy. Yeah. Is the idea behind this. I just, this, this card has, I look at this card in the exact same light that I look at Pyre Chomper. It is really hard to spend the energy you get off of this card, and timing it correctly is very difficult. 
like permafrost, right? That's all you gotta do with this to make yeah. it playable. I would say permafrost, and you need uh, an X cost card. Yeah. To, to play with it. Yeah. In the scope of moves. in the scope of just melting, there is not a good X card to play this on. Mm -hmm. So you you do need like probably like you said just umbra right yeah like i feel like a lot of the other uh clans they don't have enough x cards to reliably find a payoff worthwhile whereas umbra does maybe that's the only clan where i would take it before getting the x cost card mm -hmm. the rest of them maybe if i have like i don't know uh the awoken spike with this is kind of neat but uh it's that's a you're wagering a lot yeah. To get to, to 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 work if you are playing or if you're picking up memories before getting that uh that rail spike. Yeah. Uh, no, like you do have a lot of units die in combat because you start with five drafts. Even in like some of the worst situations, this is going to still give you like two or three energy. But you're wasting a draw for that, and I think that this is a hard card to play without something to support it that gets you draw, or an X card, or Shadow Siege. Yeah, or Shadow Siege. I guess. Even even then, that's not a good plan because it's hard to get enough units to die before drawing Shadow Siege on the first cycle through. Yeah. You can maybe get it out pretty reliably on the second cycle, but that's not a great game plan either. Yeah, so what you need is you also need a way to freeze Shadow Siege, so you're going to need the freezing cards from Stygian as well as Memories of the Melting and Shadow Siege. Mm -hmm. So you can freeze Shadow Siege and then also get it off with Memories of yeah, the Melting. So now you've managed to somehow get the Stygian Relic that freezes uh -huh. in, in while you're playing Melting and uh, Umbra, correct? Yeah, this is easy. So you're playing Stygian Melting and you get a random rare draft from Umbra, from Umbra and you pick Shadow Siege. Shadow Siege? Easy. Okay, that, that's, that's actually such an easy scenario. I don't see why it's so crazy. <laughs> Not that. Okay, you know, fair. Yeah, fair. fair. Easy. Fair. Up next. Zero energy spell, consume, reform two random units. Sacred Wicks. This one is random. I don't like it. Yeah. Consuming to reform two units, you're just gonna reform yourself two dregs, and it's like, why? That's all. I don't have anything to say about this. Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst value, though, but it does suck early when you have no good units to reform. Yeah. And it's just getting you, it's just getting you two dregs or whatever, and then it's also not great late game, because... You're gonna want a specific unit probably, and it's just like, oh, let me get, let me get you two dregs real quick. And it's coming right up, and it's just like, no. Yeah, or you reform a unit because it's random. You just reform a burnout, a non-burnout unit, and you just go, ah, shit, this was a waste of my time. I don't like this card. I agree. Up next, one energy spell: kill a random friendly unit, kill a random non-boss enemy unit. Crushing demise. Oh, that's good. I hope, you, I hope you like coin flips. That's, I mean, it's not you don't you can eliminate the coin flip because you can play this on a room that you don't have a unit in. That is true. I think the best thing about this is you could just like keep your second floor clear, give this hold over, and then just play it every turn in the second floor and kill an enemy for free. However, you know, sort of the same like use case there, I guess. Then as Inferno, but Inferno costs three, but like it does more damage, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Crushing Demise just kills a unit, so this does... It'll just, like, kill anything on you. It's nice for that. Uh, I like this card a lot because... You know, it's easy to make it good, and sometimes, even in bad cases, it can, you can be like, Oh, well, I have to play this hero or I die. And then you just, like, throw a few dregs down in the room, and at worst, it's like a one in three that you kill your most important unit. And then you do, and then you unplug your computer, you throw it out the fucking... Throw it in the trash can like Ron Swanson from Parks and Recreation, and you just move on with your life. You never have to play this game again after losing that one. Yeah. Or you go to the next run. I don't really... No, I don't judge you. Uh, I would say... That's pretty cool yeah uh, i think that the best the best thing you can put on this we haven't been doing too much upgrade talk but i don't think there's been much noteworthy upgrades other than like a few permafrosts this is a good card to give like minus one cost and hold over right you kill a unit for free every combat then or every round yes. that's as cool. long as you have that empty floor which is still very cool i agree do you think theoretically you could utilize crushing demise with hold over and minus one cost to win a combat without playing anything up until the boss like without playing units um... Maybe like combat three, if you get the event where you get five copies of it and you manage to put both those upgrade upgrades on it. Yeah, I, I, I so. can see it happening where you just like you just kill five units every turn. I think you can get through. I mean, your 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 pyre will have to kill something probably. It's really hard to set that up uh, 
Yeah, how would you kill the Ask boss, me. I guess, is the question. Oh, that's when you play Shadow Siege, because you're playing with uh, ice cream. Easy. Yeah, yeah, of, co of course. Easy, easy. Uh, up next, one energy spell, apply stealth to to friendly units, engulfed in smoke. God, Remnant Host. Or not Remnant Host, what's his name? I've already forgotten his name. Molten Encasement. Oh, yeah. Eat your fucking heart out. Yeah, it is, it is just better, huh? Like, strictly better. The only yeah. difference... In my opinion, this is the comparison of Space Prism to Crucible Extension, except in this situation, uh, Space Prism is a worthless piece of shit, and Crucible Extension is the greatest shit in the world. Yeah, I guess I guess because of the fact that it applies to stealth, it's like a Crucible Extension applied to room. Yeah, like yeah, pretty much. Right, it's double is double the effect. And then also costed the same. Yeah. But so engulfed in smoke. Here's here's the thing. This is a single. Like I haven't done this, but I have been told that you can do this. This is a win condition for every single boss fight. If you just get holdover on this thing, you can just continuously apply stealth throughout the entire combat, and then the boss never gets to take a turn against you, right? Yeah, the boss it, misses. It's definitely the like uh, crucible collector type. Just you know, stack up a million uh, charges of whatever your buff is here, stealth, I guess, and then mm -hmm. just. Relentless shows up and you get to smack it for 800 turns and they do nothing. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's it's crazy. Mm. It's really strong. Throw like double stack holdover on this and you're applying four stealth a turn. The only thing you got to worry about is burning out and that's it. And a lot of, you yeah. know, just make sure you don't have a burnout. Enemies, yeah. you know, you need your plan to get through the enemies, but this is a great boss killer. If, if your plan is Lady of, or I guess your this does not work with Lady of the Reformed, basically. Yeah. If your plan is to like, have Lady of the Reformed and Burnout Rector on the floor, and then just give them a bunch of stealth, there is a uh, severe uh, problem with your <laughs> game plan. Yeah, you have a big flaw. Yeah, it's not, it, it don't work. Probably, you know, probably the best unit to put this on, if we want to hypothesize, I would imagine it's a bounty stalker that you've been farming the entire game. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Any any big bigger unit that has high attack will do great work with this engulfed in smoke. I would say that, like, Engulf and Smoke is a great option. Like, this game plan is a good option if you are playing Remnant but focusing on your other clan more so. If they have, like, a win condition that you're you're trying to use, this is a good supporting uh, element to that win condition, probably. Yeah. As long as it's not, like, spikes or something. If you're trying to do, like, uh, like a multi-strike Hellhorn uh, <laughs> build, uh, this this works well with that. If you're trying to stack a hundred spikes, there's another <laughs> another issue in your game plan once again. I just, I just really like the idea of someone every single turn playing like I don't know. They got they got their guy up to like a hundred regen, a hundred stealth, and they're like, okay, this is over. Face demise, Seraph, and then their Thorn Hollow does like five hundred damage to Seraph, and then just dies. Mm -hmm. That's a really funny idea. Don't don't be that person. But like, also, if you do, send me a screenshot. I want to see that now, too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Up next, one energy, 25 attack, 40 health, two space, burnout three, Lady of the House. You ever notice? Honestly, in my head, this is cl close to being, like, almost as obsolete as the tomb unit was to engulf and smoke. You think? Because like, of Rector? It's not, it's not, like, as much. But, like, just Lady of the Reform just being this, like, linchpin card in the Burnout strategy just makes Lady of the House seem so much worse in my eyes. Even though, like, I'm looking at it and I'm like, Lady of the House still probably isn't that bad of a unit. Yeah. I I think Lady of the House is the only melting unit that, like, if, I, if I'm offered Lady of the House early and I'm playing a different clan as my main, like, I'm playing, say, Umbra main, and I'm, I'm, I'm offered a Lady of the House early, this is the only Burnout unit I would consider taking, because that 2540 body can get you through some of those early combats, and, you know, maybe you pick up a few Burnout cards and she can be a nice little off-tank for you, you throw her down in front of something, something like that, you know? But... Yeah, there's, like, there's, like, no doubt that her stats are, like, good. Yeah, she's well statted. You face 40 HP, 25 damage, but she will die. Yeah, she will die. She will die at some point, three turns from when you play her. Yeah, I, I tend, I do tend to pick her up if I see her. Like basically, if I, if my first unit draft is Lady of the House, and I don't know, let's say my unit draft, I'm playing. Like if I'm offered both of these ladies, and I am uh, not committed to burnout, there are times where I'll take Lady of the House. Although, as I look at it now, side by side, you should probably just take Lady of the Reformed because she does tank but doesn't die to burnout. 
Yeah, that's like the issue too. Is that like it's it's ten or it's fifteen less damage, but on your tank that's not a deal breaker at all. And then she also, at the worst case scenario, gives herself more burnout. Yeah, she's kind of outclassed. But if you can't get, like, I think she does fine in some of the early combats, right? She can help take out some heavies. I'll go to bat for her for that, but by all, I don't think she's great. She's okay. I, I am of the opinion that she is mostly obsoleted by Lady of the Reformed. Nice. Not as badly as the tomb is, is it obsoleted by Engulf in the Smoke, but it's honestly, like, I think pretty close. Yeah. I mean, I understand where you're coming from. The only, the only argument I can make, right, is that... Sometimes you don't see Lady of the Reformed, and there are situations oh, yeah. where, yes, you know, yes. you get offered her and you take her then, right? It's like, oh, I need a unit. You know, slap her down with, like, a... There is... By, this is maybe an important thing to mention, actually. We haven't talked about the clan-specific upgrades that you can see, because for the most part, they're not that important, right? It's like Incant Armor 1 on Stygian. It's like Spikes Honestly, 4. Honestly, most of them are pretty much trash, I yeah. would say, actually. I, I, don't, I don't hate the Spikes 4. However, Melting has a upgrade in their shop, in their unit shop, that can add Burnout 1 to a unit. I have had this be very good. I'll talk about the unit that I had this be very good on when we get there. But, you know, throw a plus 1 Burnout on the Lady of the House from the shop, and maybe she does something a little extra for you, too. Just know that the option's there, basically. Yeah. Throwing that down on, like, that that is something that is worth considering on a lot of units. However, you know, you typically, on a damage unit, you want to give them, like, I don't know, maybe multi-strike or something else instead. But it is there. You can throw it down. Maybe it make, makes Lady of the House a little better in your eyes. It doesn't really change her in my eyes that much. I would say an important thing to note as well is that it's, in, unless you're using Lady of the Reformed, it is hard to support multiple burnout units. Yes, it is. Right? If you're playing Lady of the House with a uh, burnout rector you are going to probably want to put all of your burnouts on rector and let lady of the house burn out even if you're trying to use her to like absorb a couple of hits before rector takes damage it's just it's just lady of the reformed is good for uh sustaining multiple burnout units you know i've i've actually had situations where i've had like three burnout units that i'm able to sustain just because the deck is thinned down and i have like three cards that extend burnout plus like a hollow yeah, drippings I, to I get didn't, started I didn't say impossible i just said it's it's hard tough. it's harder yeah. uh, and it, you know it kind of depends like maybe you just want to let lady of the house burn out because she's a great target to reform as well that's true as well bring her back the, with four burnout. where she belongs more so actually is, is uh, that's the one advantage she probably has over lady of the reform is that she's a better unit for reforming over and over again I don't, I don't know because you actually kind of want her to die then they bring her back and we're kind of talking about them together definitely better targets than her though still but I, honestly i think that lady of the reformed we may as well just lump these two together into one discussion at this point one energy 10 attack 40 health two space burnout three revenge friendly burnout units gain burnout one so whenever she gets hit she adds burnout to everyone on her floor and you know we're comparing these two because they are the same unit right they're the same model they fit in the same role but one of these extends burnout and one of them just dies and has 15 more attack yeah it's it's like we keep saying it but it's, it's just like it's such a good ability yeah like they, they both fill the role of like a frontline tank but lady just the fact that she then also gives utility she's a frontline tank with like amazing utility basically yeah her her biggest pitfall is that she's bad against seraph this is a unit that gets you through most of the game but will not get you through seraph alone mm -hmm. right like if you have because she takes up two space so say you take a space upgrade if you set her up with four drafts behind her that's not enough damage to punch through seraph in your best case that's probably going to be like I don't know. They're going to all be, maybe if you got everything right, they're probably all going to be doing about 60 around. That's only 240 around, and Seraph has 4,000 health. And Lady of the Reformed, even if you give her as much health as you possibly can without increasing her with large stone, right? She's only going to be at 90 health. She only lives three rounds. The, the, the issue is you put large stone on her, there's less uh, drafts yeah. you can put behind her. Yeah, and then it's like, oh, well, what if I just put a second Lady behind with 90 health? And then it's like, well, you have two less drafts <laughs> now. <laughs> no, and, you're not listening. You're not listening. Stop. And it's just, what if I just make it all Lady of the Reforms? Hang on a minute. An entire an entire train of Lady of the Reformed, and then no one will ever burn out again. Mm -hmm. Lady Lady of the Reformed, like, she's good, she'll get you to Seraph, but she doesn't win you the fight on her own. This is where, like, maybe you want to have... Like, like she's, she's a good unit to tank in front of your unit that's going to punch through the heavies, right? But she is not your boss killer. Your boss killer is like, I've been farming an Overgorger on the top floor all game. Your boss killer is I've been spamming regen onto a Thorn Boy, farming a Bounty Hunter, all of these things, right? You yeah. can't do it with her. I, I agree. 
and Lady of the House, I think same same thing. Lady of the House is a much more straightforward situation of just like, take her, she punches through a few heavies for you in the early game, and then she falls off. But she does remove herself from the combat pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. That's all, right? Yeah. All right. Hey, I just all of a sudden my eyes have opened. I've seen the light. One energy, 15 attack, 15 health, two space, strike, friendly burnout units gain rage two, paraffin enforcer. Is this guy the missing piece of the puzzle? What puzzle? The how do you win with burnout puzzle. No. Do you give this guy plus 50 health and put him behind Lady of the Reformed with two drafts no, behind you him? Don't. You're not listed. You don't have enough room. No, but think like, but actually think about it, right? In a relentless combat, this guy's going to continuously scale them up. He's going to have, if you give him 50 health, he's going to have 75. He's going to get off like, I don't know, five hits. That's 10 rage. That's 20 extra damage on top of whatever else you're already stacking over the course of the combat. He could actually be the answer. I wonder if he is. I don't think so. I think it's still, it's still a room issue. You need to get like probably for that to work. You need to probably go double room upgrades on, yeah. your, on your on your way up. That could yeah. be. I can see that maybe then we're working because then you do you do Lady of the Reform, the Paraffin Enforcer with you know maybe even just like a multi strike and then an HP upgrade. I don't know. Yeah, multi strike. Right. He really yeah. he really does want multi strike. Maybe you give him a large stone. Oh, and then you give Lady of the Reform the large stone. Stop. Stop. And then you don't right. play any drafts. I, I I think I think the 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 area this does work is like giving him multi-strike hp stone giving lady double hp stone and then you yes i guess you just go like you just pump as much as you can into into drafts behind yeah. them okay wait i might maybe I might, it's it's tough maybe i've cracked the code i think i finally got it are you ready so no, large not. stone lady of the reformed and then you put paraffin enforcer with multi-strike behind that and then you put a draft on the floor above and drip fall him in that's kind of that's kind of interesting that like not not what you said but the idea of like <laughs> trying to do a, try to do a strategy where you then like you set up something like this pair of an enforcer lady the reform and then just the entire fight is you just putting drafts uh above and dripping them in yeah to, to not worry about room capacity so that, that's more interesting there's there's one major problem with that idea it, it's hard to do no no even even like even more difficult than consistently playing drafts and dripping them in the I hardest keeping your lady alive for that long yes so you're gonna need march of shields no stop you're gonna need to then let your lady die reform her put her on the top floor drip her in and then march of shields you're gonna permafrost the entire deck all right we've got it uh yeah. we didn't even talk about paraffin enforcer because on his own this unit fucking sucks right he's a 15 yeah. 15 he does nothing for you yeah, he's, he's pretty bad in the zone. I think maybe, I think honestly, maybe this could work. This this strategy of like, of Lady of the Reformed, Paraffin Enforcer, and then like, either dripping in or just having a huge, maybe with Umbra, you just have a huge room. Yeah. Just filled with like, you know, really cool drafts that are neat. But <laughs> it's, it's, it's tough. Yeah, so, you know, once again, welcome back to me harping on one major mechanic i don't understand why the fuck does rage exist here why is rage a mechanic outside of hellhorns i don't get it this is worthless right he's giving four attack on the round that he attacks and then it just ticks away in two rounds yeah i just i don't understand i don't i don't get it and i don't like it but like every now and then this is kind of cool but like this is only this is only for use on drafts right Lady of the House, Lady of the Reform, they don't give a fuck about Rage. Rector with, oh boy, we're gonna give our Rector as 150 health, or 150 attack plus two Rage, thank fucking god, right? Yeah, yeah. I just, I don't understand what the hell this guy's doing here. He's not even supposed to be here. This does seem like, like an ability that makes more sense in Hellhorn minus the burnout part. Yeah, it's like, what do you- Which, what, which already does kind of exist in uh, Branded Warrior, but Branded Warrior, it's a slay trigger, not a strike. Yeah. I guess this guy, like, maybe you could do a rage build with Hellhorned Relics, but, like, it's just so weird. I don't understand why this is here. I don't get yeah. it. I don't understand you, Paraffin Enforcer. What are you doing here? Up next, his cooler cousin, the one energy, 20 attack, 3 health, 2 capacity, Paraffin Thug, slay, gain 20 gold. We finally get to talk about the best mechanic in melting. Yeah, capitalism. Capitalism, baby. He kills enemies, you get money. Yeah. You it's, die. It, it, it's very strong early game. Oh. It's so good early game because like you just you just you get two hundred gold for putting this in your deck kind of, yeah. right? Like it's gonna make you some money. It's got the damage to do it early game. All you need is 
a, like a, a big, I don't know, maybe a big burnout unit to like uh, hmm. build a front line for you. Yeah, someone with like maybe had some way to get that in, in melting. Oh, someone, no. someone who had like maybe sixty health. Mm -hmm. Huh. Or maybe, and then, and then maybe also like in case someone was really tanky, uh, Rector just got them very low, and then Paraffin Thug, I don't know, kills the tank afterwards as a yeah. cleanup. Yeah, or like he, or like he, the front line dies, and then he, Paraffin Thug just goes in and hits the one HP backliner, right? Yeah, and then you've given him multi strike, so he kills all three backliners afterwards. Oh, and then you just make like eighty gold around. Yeah, it's it it's. It's 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 we're we're kind of making jokes here, but it's not super hard to have Paraffin Thug generate a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But Paraffin Thug sucks at the end game. So oh, he's bad. so bad. He's a yeah, twenty attack he, goon. Yeah, exactly. He's he is honestly a pretty good candidate for removal if you got rid of all your train stewards. Yeah, the big thing to say about capitalism as well is like, who fucking cares about money when you're fighting Seraph? It's just score at that point. Yeah, you you want you want money for the the relic shop before Seraph. Yeah. Or, or or stuff like that. Like that that's you know that being said, money's great. Everyone yeah. loves money. Paraffin Thug I kind of look at as like a baby hellhorned prince, honestly. He requires a little bit of thinking, unless you just throw a large stone on him. Then you just slap this dude down on the second floor and he cleans house. Mm -hmm. Right? You let you let whoever's on the first floor soften him up and then this guy just fucking bop 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 well, cha -ching. The strike, he's just making you bank. Mm. Mm, that's money. Like he'll pay for himself with those upgrades and then some. Mm. Yeah. He's really good too. Like he's good. Like 20 attack is nothing to be like, you know, the stat line is 20 attack, 3 health. He's obviously very weak to a lot of things yeah, yeah. as many remember people Horned are. Warrior? Remember Horned Warrior was it was what? 30 attack and yeah. 3 health? 4 yeah. health? 30 attack, 4 health. Yeah, this is this is obviously worse. But But <laughs> Horned Warrior doesn't make you bank. Yeah, Horned Warrior is not dollars. Perfect Thug's cool. Uh, yeah. Just use your brain a little bit, and you can make a lot of money off of this. Oh man, I forgot about this card. I I'm almost sorry, Molten Encasement. One energy, zero attack, five health, extinguish, summon two draft units, Remnant Host. This is a one space unit. Remnant Host is much better than uh, whatever the other thing is. I keep forgetting the name of. Yeah, Molten Encasement. It's like it's like a little better. This has a lot of problems. A lot of pro this has so many problems. Yeah. This card, I believe, if I remember correctly, it summons the drafts in front of, like, or in like the spot that it was at, right? Yes. More or less. Yeah. So if you use it to tank a hit, the drafts then get summoned in that spot and will proceed to keep getting hit because your remnant host probably died on the first hit. Oh, you know this. Oh, you know. I guess we can talk about intent on death now since this is the best card to use intent on death, right? Mm, almost. Almost. Always. Oh, is there a better one? Yeah, we'll get to it. Oh, yeah. No, this card's not good. Like, this isn't the fun draft summoning card that we were talking about either. There's a lot of problems with this because one, the, basically, the, what you what you use this card for is you put this down and then when it is killed, it'll do 20 to 40 damage for you based on the enemies or maybe it'll do zero. That's it. Yeah. Like, that's all it does. This it, isn't... It, it, it... It, it, I honestly do. I want to make an argument though for it being much better though than Stealth Boy. It, it is better than Stealth Boy. Yeah. Like, Wait. The, the the worst case scenario for Remnant Host is that it dies and then the two drafts die right away afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's taken. That's taken three hits for you. I figured it that's out. Not, that's not terrible. Oh, I no, cracked the code out. Oh no. Lady of the Reformed. In front, large stone, paraffin enforcer behind her, Remnant Host in the back with intent on death, just popping out drafts every single round. You're gonna run out of room though, just like unit unit wise. Like yeah, and then you drop already three units. You have room for four drafts behind that before you exceed the the, the unit limit. I'll, I'll hack the game. I'll mod it. <laughs> oh, okay, I got. I didn't realize that that was an option. Okay. <laughs> I'll mod the game. The mod. You'll 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 go into the code and increase the unit limit. Okay. Yeah. Would that, uh, well, just real quick, real quick. Would there be would that be a good relic? A relic that increases the unit limit? Yeah, I mean, yeah, but also no, it would be very uh, good or very worthless, and there's no in between. Yes, I agree as well. Very variant. Okay. Shall we move on? Uh, I hadn't finished my point though. You wanted to do the thing about Remnant oh, Host. Oh, sorry. You intent on death. And what was your point? I just want to say that, like, worst case scenario, this card takes three hits for you. That's, like, probably a little bit, like, worse than the best case scenario for the uh, other boy who whatever it is stealth boy yeah stealth boy yeah 
his worst case is worse than the best case for stealth boy but this guy's best case is pretty good it takes a hit for your front line and then pops out two units that then deal 40 damage and die right away so they're not taking up space yeah i mean Which is not honestly i think you just treat this the same way you treat entombed explosives i think it's worse than entombed explosives it is but you play it in the same way yes that's all it's just shitty entombed explosives Oh shit, I just looked at the next card. I just looked at the next card. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hadn't flipped the page yet, I didn't know. Oh, oh baby. One energy spell. Remove all debuff effects from friendly units and all buff effects from enemy units. Resin removal. The best fucking card in the game. Oh. It is so good. Stop making fun of it. Resin removal. It's mean. This is maybe... I'll, like, just, I'll, just, I'll say, it, it's just too situational. This is a card that could go blow for blow with Pyrogro in the conversation of worst card in the game. However... No, no there's there's a use case for resin removal, yeah. though, still. In the same way, there's like kind of like the, the silence card from Stygian is like, okay, sometimes. Yeah, well, I mean... Pick it up if you know like the next boss you're fighting is weak to it. But this is the big problem. You don't. Yeah. So here's here's let's let's lay the groundwork first of all. Debuffs are any red effect that are played on your units. The two major ones that you're going to be able to use this on are Daze. This will clear the Daze on the top floor when you play a unit, and Ember Drain. It does clear off all Ember Drain forever. The buffs that enemies experience are any green effects, life steal. That's relevant to Sap. Yeah, sap. sap. You can take this on Sap Seraph. Yeah. yeah. Uh, green buffs like Life Steal or uh, Spikes, for example, can be cancelled out by this card. However, this does not cancel out Sweep, does not cancel out Trample, things like that. The, I, when I first picked this up, I thought it cancelled Multi Strike, and I was like, this is so good. And then I played it, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> it does not cancel Multi Strike. Yeah. So. Um, it's just, there's maybe three bosses in the game that have an effect you can cleanse with this. Yeah. I, I think that, um... Well, also there's, there are units, but the issue is that this card is not worth the space in your deck to use on a unit. How no many units, units have a it? buff or debuff so strong that you're like, oh, I need this. Yeah. Other than other than maybe Ember Wings. Yeah, and even then... I, I'll, I'll honestly... Debatable. Resin removal would be a good card if it was consume and permafrost. That's all it needs, in my opinion. I can see that. But um, at, as it is, this card is something that you can take if you're like, wow, I will just lose outright to the stealth boss because this will remove stealth from the stealth boss on floor five. It'll remove lifesteal from the Sorrow of sorrows. That's basically it. Yeah, that really is it, huh? This card does something for you against two bosses on floor five, and occasionally it'll clear sap. And, you know, most importantly, I think you can use this to clear dazed. That's so sad that the, the best use case is the the covenant effect. Yeah, it is. It's 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 a sad, sad card. But it has it has some applications, whereas in my opinion, Pyro has virtually none. Therefore, resin removal is not as bad. I agree. I'm gonna pause the recording real quick. I gotta be right back. Okay. Up next, Votavary. One energy, one attack, one health, one space. Endless. Extinguish. Draw one. This card's cool. It's a weird little boy, but I agree. It's a, it's a very cool effect. Yeah. Uh, this is actually the card that I used to really, really good effect with the Burnout 1 uh, upgrade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you... I, I have done that as well. Before. Yeah, because you can. Eight dies is pretty cool. You can like do something like you know, Wickless Tycoon on the top floor, mm -hmm. just playing them up there to just farm more and more money, or Wickless Baron as well. Although I don't like Wickless Baron that much, but we'll talk about that next. I guess. Yeah, I had the uh, the relic that does five damage when a burnout unit dies, so this just became deal five damage every single round to for me, which was a cool little combo. But yeah. Votavary is just a card. It draws itself and then like it draws you a card and then puts itself on top of your deck. So it effectively removes itself from the from the deck as long as you keep playing it. It does cost one, which is something to keep in mind. It is not free entirely, but yeah. 
uh, it's basically you just use this to trigger harvest, right? Tank a hit for you. Yeah. That's it. If you have a harvest unit that this is good with, you can take it as long as you have the space. Otherwise, just pass. I, I agree. You got some weird big hands, too. I don't like it. Yeah, I mean, you know. Probably turn it into a draft, dude. Wax, I like it. Wax is turning all orange. Is Boda very like a word or like a play on words that means something else? Because I've never heard of this before. Let's look. I have never heard this word either. I wouldn't be surprised if like a Bodavar is like, I don't know, a child you launch out of a catapult or something. <laughs> <laughs> You're meant to just kill him over and over again. I don't know. Oh, uh, what? I don't know. Like I'm just saying, like maybe the word Bodavar is like a small child that you launch out of a catapult. I don't know. <laughs> I did not find anything when I looked up Votaveri. I think this might just be a word they made up. Okay. Oh, yeah, because the vo the house that the candles are from is called Votive House. Oh, okay. So this is like probably just someone who dwells in their major house. I understand. Anyway, uh, not much to say about Votaveri, to be honest with you. Up next, one energy, 15 attack. Oh, sorry, five attack, 15 health. Harvest, plus one attack and plus three health. He has two space. He is Wickless Baron. <sighs> He's okay. I have a conspiracy theory. Okay. I think Wickless Baron and uh, Pen uh, Gorge Penumbra got their abilities mixed up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they like bumped into each other in the mail room and yeah, switched exactly. mails? Exactly. I yeah. think that Wickless Baron was meant to have the big attack boost on Harvest, and I think that... Uh, that Penumbra Gorge was supposed to have the HP increases on on gorging. God, imagine how good they would be together if they were just reversed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like here's here's the issue, right? Like Wickless Baron wants to be in the back line eating eating these dead people, more or less, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he wants people in front of him to die so he can trigger you he wants your own units to die and trigger harvest while also hopefully killing some units as well on the floor you're on right which is hard for him to do but like kind of possible uh the issue is that he's gaining way more health than attack and backline what, what, what do backline units need all this health for yeah they don't. well if he gains enough health theoretically he can just go blow for blow with any boss in the game i have seen him do that for me a few times i've had this guy have some success if i gave him multi-strike in basically if you i think that this guy is an okay backline if you give him multi-strike and slap him behind a gorger for umbra however you don't really need him there with the damage shield one i think this guy does well with crucible collector crucible collector handles bosses on his own but this yeah. guy he kind of fills in like a weird off tank role where out for killing bosses he gives your backline a little more time but is that really yeah, worth it I, i've had times where i've used him as like that sort of off tank role where it's like i'm just constantly throwing uh dregs in front of him and then he's protecting a squishy backliner if you know people get through those that line of dregs in front of him yeah that's he's... not necessarily like required that's just like it, it i don't know it's not that good of a strategy, I guess. Yeah, I want it to be good, but he's weird, and I don't think he's like, necessary. Like I said, good. imagine if him and, and Penumbra Gorge were switched around, right? Like, yeah, that's what we have is that we like we keep saying that like Gorge units in the front line shouldn't be DPS; they should be tanks. And Penumbra Gorge becomes like a big DPS unit, which is an issue because you don't want him doing that. Yeah. And then in the inverse, I feel like Harvest is it would be better as an offensive mechanic where it's, you have the backline unit constantly watching all these people die. If Wickless Baron got plus three attack and one HP instead, if it was switched around. Oh my god. Be, right? He would be, be really insane. Good. That role you're saying that you can play him in there, like the backline DPS would be, I don't know, maybe three times better. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, roughly, right? Exactly. So. He doesn't need the health, right? Like plus one health, he would he would be he would be maybe one of the stronger units in the game if he had that switch, because he would be a great backline DPS. Although he would have that ramp up time, so he probably wouldn't be that strong. He would have that ramp up time, but he is so he would start off safe because he has 15 HP. You don't have to worry about sweeps or spikes. Yeah, it's just it's weird because he, he you would bleed a lot of early heavies, right? Because a lot of heavies would just walk past him. That's true, but then and that would be his big it's problem. There's this crazy card in in. Uh in the melting rep that is really good at oh, killing yeah. and we, it's, yeah. uh, it, it, it's called Wickless Tycoon. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it, it, it's it's not I, I think that I think that Melting Run that because of Burnout Rector has one of the easiest times killing heavies probably. That's so true. It, I think I think it is safe to strategize around 
uh, not necessarily having to worry about killing heavies because he does a good job of it. Yeah, you're not wrong. As long as he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. uh, up next, one energy, three attack, 20 health, two space. Harvest gained five gold, the other half of the capitalism boys. Wickless Tycoon. It's, it's pretty crazy how like just two cards having the ability to gain money more or less gives you like a like a like a sub a sub archetype that you can do mm -hmm. that's like really strong yeah basically if i'm ever offered this card within the first three fours i pick it yeah just throw them in the back on a floor that you're going to be killing a lot of enemies one thing i should point out i will be pointing this out a little more once we get into the rares but one of in my opinion the strongest early to mid game combos in the game is having a strong harvest unit like any any harvest unit putting them on the second floor with jack strips the relic because they will just farm so many backline kills yeah it is crazy how much they get off of that also oh, yeah. if you've ever if you've ever had a, a a game where you've taken wickless tycoon and paraffin thug and just like paraffin thug kills tax collector wickless tycoon harvest the money from the kill as well and it's just like mm. It's just, why? That is, that is like 75 gold in one hit on the early game, up to like 125. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. It, it, it's it's bank. Yeah. However, like like uh, Paraffin Thug with the Tycoon, sucks against Seraph. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. He if you if you give him two HP upgrades, he is an okay tank, but not very good. Yeah, I I prefer to just like give him a large stone or just put him in the back on like I I think that he goes on whatever floor you tend to kill all of the backline on just to maximize your money gain. But even if he doesn't fit right because he is a fat two space boy, you can just throw him on the top floor with a bunch of drags and he'll at least earn you twenty five gold of yeah. combat, which that, is that's huge. one of the great things about it. Yeah, just being able to just throw drags up on up on floor three and just have Whipless Tycoon just tower above all the peasants below him. Mm hmm. It's lovely. Even, even in your worst case, this guy gives you 25 gold of combat, which is good. And in some yeah. crazy cases, he can give you like upwards of 100. Money. Dollars. Cash. That's it, right? Yeah, that's about it right there. Uh, up next, two energy spell. Deal damage to enemy units equal to three times the number of friendly units that have died in this battle. Fatal melting. It's fine. It, it's yeah, I agree. It is fine if you're hurting for AOE uh, damage and you don't have a good way to clear the backline, which I guess we didn't really mention. Like, I guess I guess we said that melting is good at, at killing the frontline because of the burnout rector. They they kind of lack actually backline damage here. Yes, they do um, severely. So this is like a pretty good card because of that, but it's not a great card. They yeah, F no, F fatal melting isn't bad. It's typically this is a card that you want to throw like a plus or a minus one energy cost on, and then you just like give it plus ten, and it yeah. does a lot for you. But for the most it, part, yeah. Is this the card that you use in Stygian for your for your big payoff? Nah, yeah, this is not the card. The card is coming yeah, on the next page, but it's close. This is a close card. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not terrible. Like to be honest, it is not that bad. It's... I, I, I wouldn't say it's bad. I would say it's good, but not amazing. And depending on your clan, it might be a worse option than something available to you. Yeah. I agree. You, 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 this is like, I'm unable to target backline for whatever reason. I have no plan. I have no hot shark. I have no sweep units. I have no, I have no hope. Yeah. And it's fine, right? Even in even in that case, this is fine because this is going to do typically like somewhere in the range of fifteen to thirty damage, I think. I mean, I've had to do it in the range of zero damage sometimes, which is why I'm a, maybe a little bit more hesitant on it. Yeah, it does have to scale up over the course of the combat, but you know, fatal melting does farm a lot if you have morsels or if you have votaberry just like dying every round. I mean, even your dregs will fuel it, which is fine. Yeah. As just, well. just, get, just, just getting a, a couple drags to die is okay. Once you get to like the the six damage threshold, which doesn't sound hard, but like you know, keep in mind that in the first couple of rounds of combat, you might not have had anything die because you didn't draw any drags. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 a thing to keep in mind. Yeah, it is it is something to be wary of, but you know, it's still it's still fine. Typically, sometimes this card just saves your life. Mm -hmm. Up next. Two energy spell, piercing, deal five damage, slay, increase damage by three, permanently, subsuming blade. Yeah. 
it's like, uh, you know, it does some damage. It pierces. It's a little expensive for the cost at first. But, uh, you know, if you're really hurting for backline damage, like we said before, I don't think I'd ever take it over Fatal Melting, but it's fine. I actually think the use case for this card is very different than what it may look. Are you are you trying to use this as your big Stygian finisher in spell weakness? No, this is a frontline killer. Oh yeah, if you can get the uh, if you can get up to fifteen damage on yes, it. Yes, you need like the only real usable case for this is you get it up to fifteen damage because. So here's the thing: baseline single target deal five damage. This kills a backline unit, or it'll pierce through armor and kill a tank for you in the early game. And you need to get it to 10 for the mid game to kill tanks, and you need to get it to 15 for the late game to kill tanks. However, like my big point about this card, the plus three damage never gets it to a point where it makes a meaningful impact on heavies, and this is a bad card to kill backline with. Which means that the only thing that I can find with this card, even after taking it with like minus one cost and holdover, all I can really find it doing is killing tanks, and it's great for that. But it's not. It's, it, this is basically glorified horn break. Does, does the permanent damage, uh, Increase between rounds, it between combats as well. Yes, it does yeah, stay I between do combats. It does stay between combats. Okay, so in maybe it's your Stygian, maybe it's your Stygian spell weakness finisher. Uh, you get holdover on it on like the first spell shop. I I have gotten early holdover on this and the cost reduction and and farmed as many kills with this as I can and in my best case this ended at fifty one damage. That's not great. No. Uh, this card is a glorified horn break. It's an overpriced horn break. Like when when you get right down to it, this card is horn break, but you don't have to pay for the plus ten damage upgrade on it. But instead, you have to give it holdover and plus one energy, or minus one energy to make it really that good. And you know, it seems like a cool card, and I wanted to really like it, but I do not think this card is that good for what it does. I think if you're really hurting for backline damage, you can still take it. But I agree that it is a worse horn break. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, this card is a targeted damage spell that pierces. There are a lot of great uses for that. However, it's not as, like, people hyped this card up to me, which is why I'm being hard on it. People are like, this card is cool, this card is great, it's insane. It's a cool effect. It's a cool effect, don't get me wrong. The, oh, it's infinite scaling, but infinite scaling in this game is not as doable as you may think, especially on spells like this. And it's just, it's just okay. It does what it does. However, that two energy cost really makes me harsh on it. Mm -hmm. Anything else? No. All right, up next. Two energy, reform a unit and enhance it with with an additional plus 10 attack spell, Wicked Blaze. This is a pun as well, in case you didn't know. Are you sure? Because it's a wick, wick, wicked oh, blaze. Oh my god. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> I need to talk about Megacrit with all these points. Yeah. So uh, this card is Reform. It's uh, Reform, but they up to the cost and the rarity of it to get you an extra plus 10 attack. I don't think it's good. Yeah, one extra cost for plus 10 attack is like, it's not the worst, but you really, like, you know, again, you really need to be putting this on a unit that cares about plus 10 attack. So maybe, maybe in like some sort of Animus build. Or you get it to like you know, like plus fifteen looks a lot better when it's getting put on a on a three times multi strike unit. But you need to like give that thing enough burnout. Yeah, I mean or, the real I, use it. I think the idea here is you're supposed to be using this on your drafts, right? But like we've already established that that's not a good plan. And I think it still might be possible, but I think it's a long shot. It's a long shot for sure. You need to be like farming draft deaths to reform them. And then like the big problem, like the big problem, right? Because you can look at this and you can go, oh yeah, I could just have my draft dying over and over and over again. But the problem with that is like, what's your plan to not be having enemies just that walk by you, right? Mm -hmm. Like how are they not just walking all over you while they're killing your drafts and you're reforming them repeatedly? It's fun to think about, but I think that it really struggles. I, I think the only real reason to take this card is if you only like if you never saw a reform card and you need a reform effect then you take this but that's it in my opinion I I concur uh, finally in the uncommon set three energy spell deal 25 damage and apply dazed two to an already damaged unit mortal entrapment also the name of my pop punk band okay. I don't care what anyone, any of you tell me. I still don't like this card that much. I I'm starting to move towards your side with Mortal Entrapment. The so the big the big key on this one is that the unit has to be damaged for this card to be able to do anything. That is my problem with it. If this was if this was 
three damage or three cost 25 damage to just any target and days two i'd be like this is a pretty good card yeah it's 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 just it's it really just feels like it's it's more or less unplayable outside of uh outside of uh like the, the relentless phase and even then it's not amazing i don't know i think that you oh, like wow. you often can make this do something for you but it is usually underwhelming especially like the big killer here is three energy i think if this card was two costed it would be a lot better but also, I, also i agree with that but i think i for me the biggest caveat is the already damaged text i think that, I, I see that, like uh, i see a lot of enemies with the with that are damaged when i take this like i see a lot of enemies where i'm able to play this and it does good work however the damage isn't that great 25 damage isn't that insane and i think typically especially in melting dazing enemies is sometimes a negative like if you're playing around that lady reformed and you're dazing the enemies that can be a problem yeah and and keep in mind that it this like you know it's direct damage but it doesn't kill backline because a if the backline has taken damage they're probably already dead Mm -hmm. This is gonna be dazing a tank. Tanks often don't do that much damage. Like it can stop like a sweep unit, which is actually pretty good, right? It can stop a sweep unit from killing your backline. But more often than not, at least the way that I generally try to play, the the dazing a tank effect is not very good for me. I really think of it in in context of fighting bosses, and in that context, it's pretty good. But like, it depends on how much daze two against the boss is worth for you, because it's hard to daze bosses. Yeah. It is. I I think this card is just okay. I've taken it a few times in runs and just been like, ah, whatever. I've taken it a few times in runs and been like, oh, this is huge, right? Uh, I think the big the big caveat that I would add is like if you have a relic that does auto damage to enemies, jack strips, uh, the mm -hmm. frostbite relic, for example, this card's yeah, a lot better because yeah. they're always damaged. Agreed. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's all there is to really say about it, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, you kind of made a joke about it before, but I do think this has the coolest name for a card. In the yeah. Game. Mortal Entrapment? Come on. It's a cool name. Come on. Uh, 25 damage does work out to be not a lot. Like, you're really playing this for the days, I guess. And this is a card that is very thirsty for upgrades. Any three energy card is, though. Yes. Ritual of Battle? Ritual of Battle. Still worse. Card needs, like, four upgrades to be good, honestly. Mm -hmm four upgrades that like don't exist in 95 percent of games well no you just need to be able to put energy reduction energy reduction energy reduction double stack on it and then it's playable mm -hmm. uh all right that's it for the uncommons here i believe uh, overall feelings about the uncommons a majority of the uh melted remnant units how you feel uh i like a lot of the units other than like maybe parahood enforcer yeah um, and maybe then, Lady like, of the House. They, lady, I, I still, I'm not super hard on Lady. Because, like, I understand where she's coming from. She's, like, yeah, she's, 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 just trying, she's just trying to be stronger than her sister. Mm hmm. But she can't. Yeah. You um, know, war wise, Lady of the House is the better of the two because she's got money. That is true. That is true. And also, don't forget, like, the most important thing, though money. Mm hmm. There's a lot of money. There is a game winner in this set as well, Engulfed in Smoke. And, um, well, I guess a Seraph killer, I should say. There's a lot of components to winning a game. Yes. Um, and, you know. I, I mean, we, we didn't, we said we were going to wait for Intent on Death, but just to clarify real quick, Intent on Death is also a game winner. Yes. With a card coming up soon. With a, with an upcoming. time is trash. When you, when you get all of the stars to align, Intent on Death is a hinge piece, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it's whatever. Uh, I think overall, as we look at it, there's maybe only like two uncommon clunkers in Wickless. Sorry, uh, in Mounted Remnant. I would say Sacred Wicks and... Oh, I forgot what Remnant Host. There's like maybe four, right? Memories of the Mounted has, is rough, Sacred Wicks is bad, Remnant Host not great, and Resin Removal, of course, not great. But for the most part, these cards are all pretty passable, playable. Yeah. Overall... Other than Resin, other than resin Removal, most of these cards do something. Yeah. 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 Like, most of them do something, at least. Yeah. Overall, uh, uncommons. I think easy worst uncommon in the game. Easy. Resin removal? Pyre grow. Pyre grow. Oh, Over yeah, overall, yeah. across all classes. I'll, yes. go, I'll look through all the clans real quick and see if I have anything that even comes close. It's going to be hard. I mean, Pyre grow, I think, gets the, the, gets the gold star for his worst card, probably. Yeah, worst card like, ever printed yeah. in a video but game. Al but, also, but also in the uncommon slot as well. Yeah, 
and just like, oh god. Yeah, just click. Oh wait, what about Ember Forge? Ember Forge, Ember, Forge. Ember Forge does something. <laughs> yeah, Ember Forge gives us hope for a meme video of killing Seraph on Covenant Twenty Five yes. with Ember Forge. All right, congratulations, Pyrogro, worst uncommon in the game. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. Ember All Forge, right. you take with the event that gives you the small stone. Ah, but then you make it, it large. Take one... Oh, but then you give it. Oh, you give it large stone afterwards. Yeah. No, no, you give it the large refraction, so it becomes a uh, twenty forty that it takes up six space. <laughs> Doesn't that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, on to the rares, finally. Only eight rares to deal with here because we are not Umbra. We're gonna you Umbra. Let's begin with the spike, the only X card in Melting. Melting's rail spike. X cost, consume, enhance friendly units with plus three times X attack and apply burnout one. Waxen spike. I hate this card. I think this card's supposed to go in the in the, the draft deck we keep talking about. But it sucks. That that yeah and even then it's not that good because you need to like you need, you need to have a lot of energy for it to be worthwhile i guess maybe if you combine it with memories of the melted yeah like yeah that's like kind of what it does or like you know with umbro with getting a lot of energy basically other yeah. ways you're supposed to play this the... but you need you need like three drafts in the row for this to be like a worthwhile uh investment yeah i would say uh, the biggest problem that this thing has is that it applies burnout one to all units. So if you have like a mix of burnout and non burnout units on the floor, this just kills all of your non burnout units. Yeah, it, yeah, like, that's, a, that's 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 a part of it. The fact that that's on this card is just mind boggling to me. Because it <laughs> yeah, like Do you why? Think this card would be good if it didn't have the burnout text. Yeah, if if they removed the burnout text or if they just made that apply burnout X, which would be more thematic, I think, mm -hmm. and just overall better. It's just weird, right? You, typically, this is just going to give like all of your units on a floor. This must have been a playtesting thing where they they changed it and because because burnout X was too strong or something, right? Something had to happen to this card. Yeah, but it's it's probably the worst rail spike. It's it's up there with Awoken's as worst, in my opinion. They're all they're all not. Like, we we, talk, we keep talking about this, but like all like yeah, the the, the morsel rail spike is like S tier or F tier, and then the rest of them are F tier. Just absolute <laughs> shit. Un unless you have like the stars aligned for them and even then they're not that amazing yeah i think the least bad one is on average the hellhorned one is okay it's like six rage six energy wow if you play that at three cost it's literally just ritual of battle but you also get six armor at this point i'm pretty sure during uh the hellhorn video god ritual of battle <laughs> yeah Ugh. anyway not much more to say about wax and spike right all right, up next. Zero energy spell. Consume cards in hand and add a draft unit to your hand. Enhance with plus 10 attack for each card consumed. Sacrificial Resurrection. This is a good card. It's... I, I don't super like it because it's very weird. It's weird. I understand the premise is to remove, like, bad cards from your deck. That's, that's where this card is, like, this is what it's used for. You don't even care too much about the drafts. Right. I have tried to keep getting to play. I keep trying to play this in a deck that does care about drafts, and it never works out for me. I, I end up, I end up removing good cards from my deck because I'm like, I need to get this big draft out now, and it just ruins me. Yeah, because the big, the biggest bait that I've experienced is this card costs zero energy. The draft that it spawns costs one energy. Mm -hmm. So if you play this at zero and wipe out your entire hand, and then try to play the draft, you just eat shit. The big problem with this card really is that it wipes out every card in your hand, so you can't save something to save the draft on the turn you play it, right? The draft is going to burn out unless you play in behind the Lady of the Reformed. Typically what you want to do, in my opinion, is you play this and you use it to uh, like make a draft, it burns out, and then you reform it on the next turn because your deck is down to like 10 cards. Yep, yeah, and and I, I, I really do think that the, the big value is to consume cards that are you can't get out of your deck by other means. Yes, like, like get, getting rid of your torches against Seraph or your frozen lances or whatever. Like getting those out of your deck is pretty nice. Yeah, it does also consume like the dead weights, the curses. It's good mm -hmm. for that as well. Important to note, it does not consume itself. You can keep playing right. this over and over. Yes, again. you get as many drafts as you want out of it. This. this is the best way to get drafts if you're committing to the draft plan. 
even in its worst case, this is just zero energy spawn you a draft that is a 10, 10 a, times two. A, a big draft. Yeah. But no, even even in its oh, worst oh, oh, case. Oh, sorry, sorry, by itself, yes. Yeah, by, if you play this card alone, you still just get a draft off of it, right? Yeah. And otherwise, you're getting like an 80 attack draft, you're getting like a 70 attack draft pretty easily, burning through a bunch of bad cards pretty quickly. It's pretty cool. I haven't yeah. uh, had a run that really hinged on it and won, but it's still a fun card. I agree. Up next, unless you have anything else you want to add. I will I will say we are talking before about trying to get Paraffin... Not Thug, the other one. Uh, Enforcer. Enforcer, yeah. I, I think that a much better game plan than using Paraffin Thug is to just use this instead. For getting yeah. It. In, In that your... style that you're talking about, I think that this is a much better game plan. Although it is rare, so it's harder to get. Yeah, but in your in your if your plan is draft plus Lady of the Reformed, you're wanna, gonna want to spawn them through this. But then like this card is kind of hard to play with because it's like, oh, do I burn through all these cards? I don't know. I'm gonna even, even if your even if your plan is just like Lady of the Reformed, Rector, then just putting one giant draft behind them, that's pretty strong too, honestly. Yeah, I agree. But it, I, again, you struggle to kill Seraph with that. I don't know. It's weird. And also make be careful about consuming cards that you like yeah that's evaluate the most whether or not the card you're consuming is worth getting rid of if it is not one of your starting cards yeah for sure up next zero energy spell remove all burnout and debuff effects from a unit wickless recruitment this is probably the first, one when i first saw this card i was like this is a it's a cool effect a b really cool art i like the candle getting cut off right that's pretty neat mm -hmm. um but then, like, I, I, I haven't played with it too much, but I've seen you play with it a decent number of times, and it seems to kind of just not do much. So, I initially thought this card was bad. When I first saw this card, I went, this sucks, right? And everyone who was watching, who had an opinion, went, yeah, this card's really bad. I think this card is great. But it... I'm sorry, you cut out there for me a little bit? What'd you uh, say? I think this card is great. Okay. I think that, looking at this card on average, this is worthless. This is terrible. What the fuck? This sucks, right? Remove all burnout and debuff effects. Most of the time you want your units with burnout, right? No, wrong, incorrect. Uh, oh, what, I have, what I have found is that Wickless Recruitment has, in, in my opinion, two major uh, use cases. And also an interesting thing to note, Wickless Recruitment does a very similar thing in most of my decks to Remnant Pact. Wickless Recruitment is used to stop your 150, 150 Rector from dying. That's it, right? You can you can take just this card and like one or two burnout cards and keep your 150 150 forever. And that is huge. Yeah, there really isn't a better unit to remove burnout from, huh? Right. And uh, the other things you can do with this card is like if you're reforming a lot and you're ref like maybe you're reforming in, you can reform one of your units that died that you want to bring back that isn't a burnout unit and then just have Wickless Recruitment frozen in your hand, clear that off and you just get that unit back but slightly stronger. I think it has good use cases. That's that's basically it. I think this card's good. Um, However, uh, it's kind of like it's kind of like the Umbra Rail Spike, right? This card is either incredible for you or this is fucking worthless. Removing debuff effects yeah. is a nice extra, but like, you know. I I think my issue with it is that it's a rare. Yeah. Which means that more often than not, I will find Lady of the Reforms first and just play that instead. Yeah. When you that, have, that's my main issue is that I always find Lady of the Reforms first before with Witless Recruitment. I never find Witless Recruitment first. Hot take for you. If you're just so in this situation, you're just using Lady of the Reform to keep Rector alive. Mm -hmm. uh, why not just Witless Recruitment him afterwards? Like just play her and keep I, him alive. I, I find most of the time is that if I have Lady out, ninety-five percent of the time Rector will die from damage before burnout. Yeah, not always, obviously, but I find most of the time he burns out or he dies from damage before burning out and in that case like you know with the recruitment is a dead card yeah i know there's a five percent where he doesn't ha doesn't burn out first but like even then in those cases most of the time he was maybe like a, not having burnout would have given him one or two more turns true you're not wrong uh i just i think this is a good card for it's it's one of the good options right there's a few good options you can take to deal with my rector is going to burn out in three turns this is a great one because you never have to worry about it again uh, like I, I, hint, I hinted at it, but we'll talk about it a little more when we get to Remnant Pact. It does the same thing in most of my decks where I would take Wickless Recruitment, I would take Remnant Pact as well. And they're both good. That's it. I think they're both good. 
Also, uh, yeah, like they're good when they're good and they're trash when they're trash. Yes, like a lot of cards in this game that are like within a clan and don't have many external synergies, Wickless Recruitment is either very good or terrible, right? If you're like, if your main plan is like, oh, I'm just going to keep Wicklashing Rector to keep him alive, this card is like, oh, well, you're just like wasting Wicklash because reapplying Burnout's just going to kill him now when you wick Wickless Recruitment him. So it's weird for that reason, but you know, good card. Anything else you want to add? No. All right. Up next, one energy, 10 attack, five health, two capacity, stealth one, extinguish, plus 10 attack permanently. Bounty stalker. It's good when it's good, it's bad when it's bad. Yeah. Like, God, this guy's so cool, but I've never actually had him work for me. Even in my best cases, I've just like, oh, I died before he ramped up. He looks like a Bloodborne character. He really does. With his big hat and his... The handkerchief he's got his cool crossbow um but yeah like if you have like a way to a let him die reliably i've had times where i, I put the burnout one effect on him mm -hmm. yep that's pretty cool yeah and he only gets like one hit it's an issue so i so you have to like in that strategy you have to somehow set that up where you're just playing on the top floor every turn he keeps dying keeps dying keeps dying and then right before relentless combat you put him behind a lady of the reformed yeah, or, or Wickless Recruitment him, maybe. Either of those. Now, now you're hinging on a, a combo with two different rare cards. It's That's a bit tricky. It's not that crazy, though. There's only... I know, it's not, I know it's not, but like it's something to keep in mind. That if yeah. That's your plan. You're, you're banking on like a, like a maybe a 5 or 10% chance that you're going to get both of them in the same run. Right. But you won't, there's a pool of 16 rare cards total based on... like from That you can see, and you'll be seeing at least 6 of them total from the two bosses if you see no other rare cards. You know, just something to keep in mind. It's not too crazy to see the rare combo you want to see. But I just... I know it's guaranteed. No, not guaranteed. Uh, Bounty Stalker is probably the best guy in this game to put Endless on because the plus 10 permanently stacks up a lot faster if he's just dying four or five times in a combat. Uh, I've had a lot of runs that lost because I've positioned this guy poorly thinking, oh, I need him to die, but it's the Relentless Combat. You got to think about him. I'm really bad at playing with this unit. Mm -hmm. He's but, tricky, but he's really cool. Yeah, he's really cool. If you, you can you can sometimes get him up to be like a 200 times 2 mm -hmm. if you get a multi-strike pretty easily. You duplicate that and he's just free victory. I think it's also meant to be like in the resolve deck where you bring him back with yeah, the that's another resolve one. so he burns out and dies and you can just keep bringing him back to using that. But yeah, uh, I don't know. That is another way to go about it for sure. If you're resolving him back a lot, that's pretty sweet. So would, would you take this card if you had no way to bring him back? Uh, yeah, like, I think I let's, say, let, let's say you're like pick four or floor four or five and you get this from a draft or something. Oh, no way. I think it's too late or... at that point if you don't have a way to bring him back. Okay. Uh, if you get him early, like if I get that, if the first event I see is draft a random rare card, I'll pick Melting searching for this guy. But for the most part, it's like you need to wait, you need to have a plan to bring him back. Although, you know, you no matter when, when or where you get him, you always have a chance to bring him back because Endless is a shop upgrade. That is true. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I think he's good though. I think he's keep, really keep good. Keep in mind that if you're trying to endless him, he does have stealth. Yeah. He, he's going to actively avoid getting killed. Yeah. Like you just, I think you just keep your keep your bottom floor clear and just put him down there, let him get his one shot and get him killed. Endless, play him again, play him again, play him again. Live, die, repeat. But he's fun. He's good. He can solo carry for you. Unlike our next unit, one energy, zero attack, five health, harvest. Gain soul one, extinguish, deal damage to enemy units equal to 15 times the soul count. Also one capacity. Devour of death. I want to point out a couple things. I never said this guy can carry. No, he doesn't carry. I think I think he's better than I think he is. I, I think that he plays a similar role to like Wickless Baron where you just sit him in the back and let him watch. And then like he saves you from like... Uh... One that, that 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 big wave of units coming up on 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 the seraphite that's gonna get to your pyre and do like 80 damage yeah but like the big problem is okay i have two major problems with him he's get he's very binary he scales up very slowly he gets like maybe in some of his best cases he gets to like maybe 30 soul which like oh that's 30 soul that's crazy it's only 450 damage and he yeah, only, he's a you plan for that that big soul gain i think he is a a specifically meant to be like a unit killer not a boss killer or anything yeah like that. but then like the big problem is it's an extinguish effect so the only way that you turn him into a unit killer is if you take uh intent on death well i i just i just play him as like as like a like that backline guy and then when that floor falls apart inevitably and dies he'll kill that floor 
I feel like though a lot of the times when that four falls apart, you're only gonna get hit, you're gonna hit like a half damage frontline heavy anyway. Typically, I just I think that he's a lot of here, my big problem with him. He's a lot of work and he's very little payoff. He doesn't one shot bosses. He doesn't win you anything. He kills one heavy for you in most cases. Sometimes if you get it to go really well, he'll kill a heavy for you every round. If you get the stars to align, that's my problem with him. Yeah, he's 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 not amazing. I think there's an interesting case for for intent on death and uh, oh maybe maybe playing with the uh, the 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 Legion of Wax actually. <laughs> I've, I, no, that's, I, the, that's the plan. I've heard that thought, but like, here's the thing: Legion of Wax doesn't need his bitch ass. No, you're right. You're 100 like, percent right. Oh, uh, like I, I've heard. I don't know how many different crazy combos I've heard for Legion of Wax, and I'm just like, that's a cool combo. But that, that doesn't. We don't need that. Like, this doesn't yeah. need to be here. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of times, like Legion of Wax with a specific card that we'll talk about when we get to him. I mean, I think it's, I think it's pretty... The cat's out of the bag. You got you got two eyes and a brain. You can probably see where this one's going. But, uh... Well, maybe, maybe not. Hold on. We'll wait. We'll wait. We'll it. wait. Okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. Shadow Siege. Yeah. Weave Wax plus Shadow Siege. That's the combo. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. Devourer of Death I don't think is very good, though. That's my hot take. I think that he's just okay. In, like, very specific situations, I think he's okay. I agree. All right. Up next... One energy spell, consume, and apply endless to a friendly unit. Remnant Pact. This is the book for Melting Remnant. This one's fine. Yeah, I agree. It's fine. Like, it's. I think it's the correct cost. Mm -hmm. um, I agree. We're talking before about getting endless on Bounty Stalker. This is the way you can do that, too. It's not a great way to do it. Yeah. I, I use this card and Wickless Recruitment interchangeably for keeping my 150-150 Rector on the field, and that's like pretty much the only case I really use it for. It does do a much worse job of stopping Burnout, though, than uh, Wickless Recruitment does. Yeah, but like... Most, he... most times, Rector will die from Burnout before he would die from damage. Yeah, but uh, typically... If you're using like, these two interchangeably. Yeah, but typically I'm not using Rector as a boss killer in the runs where I use them interchangeably. Typically, I'm just using him as, like, punch through heavies and then have something to kill bosses top floor, right? This is fair. That's that's my that's my take on it. So, you know, Endless is cool. Like, the, that's that's the big thing to say about this. Endless is a shop upgrade, but this lets you put Endless onto your uh, champions, right? That's the big thing that's easy to overlook. Yeah. Because you can put Endless on anything except for your champions, and that's what this lets you do. And that's it, right? That's all there is to say. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, typically you want to put Endless on a unit from the shop so that you have it right out the gate. But if you can, would you, would you would you go as far as to say like, like when when do you pick this card? Is it literally only when you have no way to bring back Rector after he burns out? Uh, more or less. I mean, I wouldn't. You know, there's some niche cases you could probably work it out with, right? Like if it's like, oh, I already have this hot shark, but I would really love him to have endless, and I have not seen endless at any of my shop. shops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like this, this is a, this is a endless is a good effect that you can make a lot of good use out of. But like, and this is a one cost card that consumes, so it's not that big of a deal. The question is, do you have something that truly benefits from being endless? That's all. Because if you don't, then this is just going to put endless on something worthless like train steward, and then you're just going to be devour claimed. of death. Yeah, devour of death. But you know, I was actually thinking, I thought about that when I started reading this. But I was like, oh, it doesn't. Like he he loses the soul on death. Yeah, he does lose the souls. If he didn't, hey, wait a minute. Uh, anything else you want to say about remnant pact? No. Okay. Up next, two energy, ten attack, thirty health, three space, big sludge, harvest, gain, rage, two. Uh, Liara commented on one of our videos recently and said that she thinks that Big Sludge is the cutest guy in this game. Look at I that hat. See that? He does have a neat hat. Yeah. I agree. I think this is a good pick for cutest art in the game. I look mean, at that hat. I disagree. And we're, look, look at Formless Child coming up next. That guy's way cuter. Okay, buddy. <laughs> Come on. Look at him. That is look terrifying. That is the face you see in Nightmares. Okay, well, let's talk about the actual card here. Alright, uh, Big Sludge sucks. Yeah, he's pretty bad. Hello, uh, once again, it's me talking about my favorite thing to talk about in this game. Why the fuck does Rage exist outside of Hellhorn? What are you doing here, Big Sludge? I don't have a problem with it existing. I just think that it's like... It, it, why didn't they put it on a better card? 
So this he, is a cool effect that should exist on a card with better stats. Here's the thing. So he doesn't have the ability to utilize them very well. Here's the thing. I've actually had, I had a run on YouTube on this here very channel where Big Sludge carried me. Would you like to hear my combo that made Big Sludge carry me? I, I remember you telling me about it already on one yeah. of your streams. It was Jack Strips. Jack Strips. Yeah. Harvest effects Jack are strips. really good in combo with Jack Strips. This just in. Yes. But he gains that's like. That's not surprising, but like saying this card is, you know, it's like. It doesn't, it doesn't, like, make the card good. It makes it a good combo. Yeah, it makes Harvest plus Jack Strips good with whatever you're harvesting plus Jack Strips thing. But he was gaining, like, eight rage, a, eight rage a turn. He gets to scale up. You throw a multi-strike. You know, honestly, if you're offered Big Sludge from your first unit draft and you get offered, like, two other absolute clunkers, you can take him, you can throw him a large stone, and he becomes a big stat ball that you can throw down to get you through the early combats. But he's not going to carry you mid or late game by any yeah. means. Also, like his stat, his stats are not good. No, he's a ten thirty. Cost two cost, ten thirty takes up three space. Yeah, that's bad. Everything about that, him is bad. bad. There is nothing good. Like at two cost, his stats are bad. His space is bad. The only thing he has going for him is a harvest gain rage too, which is not that great because it's hard to harvest your own units because he takes up so much goddamn space. And then he's also going to need multi strike to really get use out of that rage. Like he needs, he needs like ah, uh, yeah, bleh. Yeah. What? However, he does look very cool. Yeah. I like his art a lot. I do too. All right. Moving on. Uh, yes. Okay. Sorry, big sludge. You look cool, but what the fuck? Two energy, zero attack, one health, one space, formless child. Extinguish. Return a random defeated unit to your hand. Enhance it with plus forty attack. This card big sucks. Number. This card it's sucks. A big number though. This card it's sucks. Big... Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> I, I, I agree. You can't rely on the formless child putting 40 attack on your win condition because it is too hard to set up. Yes, you need your win condition to die, and then you need your formless child to die directly after them without anything else dying, so that you guaranteed get your win condition back. Because if you don't, sorry, you lost. Yeah, it's and it also cost two. Two it's, energy. It's not, it's, yeah, it's two energy too. Right? I think you almost need to kill this yourself. Ooh, hold on. Yeah, like, you, you need to put this on the top floor behind, like, Wickless Baron, who's farming gold up there for whatever reason. And then you kill your own unit, and then you, like, subzooming blade the formless child to get it back immediately after killing it. But that is a lot, like, that's, oh, that's, that, oh, well, when you put it like that, it's real good. Except, like, oh, well, a sweep unit you, walked up there and killed it. You need to also more or less remove all the dregs from your deck, mm -hmm. otherwise they're just dead draws. All the train stewards need to go as well. Yep, uh-huh. And, like, most oh, of the units you, that you oh, do this I on. I figured it out, I figured it out. Okay. So instead, we don't remove the train stewards. We get the relic that makes the train stewards have multi strike and damage shield. Uh huh. We win with train stewards. Ah. It's not there you good. go. That's my plan. <laughs> All right. You know, is there something to be said about comboing this with intent on death? No. Yeah. No. I mean, I, I think the better application is maybe endless, but even then, that's. No, crazy. God, it's way worse with endless. Are you kidding me? You're paying two energy a turn for this shit. <laughs> that's terrible. The better combo yeah. is just to use hold over intent on death. That's a good point. Yeah, huh? But like that still sucks because what are you doing? You're re you're making forty nine three dregs. Oh boy. Yeah. Now the only thing to say about this is it says return, not reform. So they do not come back with plus five, plus five, and burn out one. And true. they do not come back free. Also true. So you know, fuck you, formless child. Get off my screen. You ready to move on? He's so, he's so soft though, don't be so mean to him. Yeah, he's soft because he's a bitch and he sucks. Shall we move on? I've, I've never noticed this, hold on, hold okay, on. Okay. All of the cards have like a little bit of wax around the frame. Uh-huh. Is does every card have one of these? Hold on. I wonder, because I noticed that as well, I didn't mention it. Oh, um, the, Awoken, the Awoken have like little like vines. Yeah, there's like little symbols around the Stygian. Hellhorn have like some red stuff. Uh-huh, anger. Umbra has just like this red or like black and red border. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that's I'm sorry. Of... I'm sorry to have distracted. It's a neat little effect for sure. All right, the big boy himself. Two energy, eight attack, eight health. Extinguish. Oh, sorry, two energy, eight attack, eight health. Four capacity. Extinguish. Summon two twins of wax. Enhance them with all enhancements and card upgrades on this unit. Twin of wax is a. 4 attack, 4 health unit 
that takes up two space, who then splits into Moat of Wax, which is a two attack, two health unit that takes up one space. So essentially, Legion of Wax splits into two four fours with two space, each of those split into two two twos that take up one space, if that makes sense. Legion of Wax is the boy. Yeah, this card does do it all, huh? This card fucks. Yeah, um, it's important to note that with no enhancements, this card is trash. Oh, it's so bad. Um, but, but with large stone multi-strike, or even just maybe HP up multi-strike or something like that, something to that effect, it's amazing because as the card clarifies, all of the units get the enhancements. Yeah. So if you give all of them plus 35 HP, all of those little boys it makes afterwards have plus 35 HP. It's not like they get a fraction, they get the whole bonus yeah. too. They get, so the way the way it goes with, for example, if you give it plus 15, plus 30 through, uh, what is it called? Large stone? Large, large stone, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be a 23, uh, 38. And then that's going to split. I think it's actually 43, 23, 43, whatever. That splits. It does not split into being a like a half that. It splits into being a like 18, uh, 38, right? Something like that. Yeah. 39, however it works out exactly. <laughs> it makes more. It makes more. Like they, they keep the stats. So if you throw large stone and multi-strike on this, they make... They they, they they kill almost every boss in the game on their own. Like, with Multi-Strike and Large Stone, they kill every boss in the game, pretty much. Now, the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to talk about Intent on Death. Yeah. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, it's scary. It is the- I think it's the strongest you can be in the game. If you get Multi-Strike, Large Stone on Legion of Wax, and then you just Intent on Death a full row of those guys, they kill Seraph on their own, and that's it. Like, that's all there is to it. They kill yeah, everything. I, I, would, I would argue there's sketches of salvation setups that can be stronger, but, like, outside of that, yeah, like, just, like, playing a unit and then doing a thing to it, it's scary. Yeah, like, so, because they, you can go over the room capacity by spawning them with Intent on Death. So you have your main Legion of Wax, who is a, like, let's just say for simplicity's sake, because I don't remember what large stone is, it's, like, a 2040, right, with multi-strike. You make two... Twins of Wax that are 1636s, and then you just split the Legion of Wax again, all of a sudden you have a row of six Twins of Wax that are all multi-striking and doing all of this. And then you have the main one that splits. Basically, you kill Seraph 16 damage at a time, and Seraph can do nothing. 30 damage around is not yeah. enough. Seraph just suffers. And, and it, it was Windmore when you did this in your last stream, I think. It, it was just like, you then drip it down to the next floor and yes. did it all over again. And then I drip to the bottom floor and the entire train was this and we could have killed Seraph probably four times over. But yeah, here's it, the thing. Nuts. The thing about this is, you may be like, wow, that sounds really strong. That is a very niche case, right? Yeah. Even, even when you don't do this, if you just give this guy, like, large stone, he does so much damage to bosses. He kills bosses yeah. so well. Doesn't necessarily kill Seraph on its own. No, not on its own, but with a little help yeah. it can. And yeah. you can just spend the whole game looking for intent on death, and if you find it, you get the nuts. Like, you just you just go insane. You beat this so, shit out of it. An important question is, when do you not take Legion of Wax? How late in the game do you go, hmm... I think the odds are going to be too low of me to get good enhancements on this Legion of Wax to make it worth playing. I mean, it's hard to say. I've always all of my good Legion of Wax runs have been when I get it early on, but probably like the latest. I, I would probably take it as late as four or five because you still have two upgrade. Like you still have two steel shops to go to at least. Yeah. At the end of four or five, you can still see a steel shop on four or six and four or seven. You can probably you can reasonably expect to see what you want to see there. Mm -hmm. Now. The biggest thing to be wary of is he does take up a ton of space. Like this guy takes yeah. up a whole floor on his own. You, he, I, he really needs the large stone just because yeah. of the, the the stat buffs it gives to all of the the minions afterwards. I'm. I, I would say maybe. Is is a second large stone better DPS wise than multi strike? Not yeah. not worrying about room capacity. Just saying like. Second yeah. Larson, does that actually help you out more so? Yeah, it would for boss combats. Mm -hmm. For regular yeah. enemies, it would be worse, but for boss combats, it would be probably yeah, better. Yeah, okay. Uh, the issue, obviously, then, is that if you put two large stones, he's now a six size unit. You need at least one more space to place him. Yeah. Potentially two if you want to place him on the room that gets the negative one room size. And yeah, and yeah, exactly. I think. Keep that, keep that in mind, too, I guess, we should point out as well. 
Uh, watch out for the negative one room if you give this man a large stone. Yep, you gotta watch out for that. Uh, Legion of Wax. The other, the other real thing to say about him is like, even if you if you don't if you don't hit like crazy and you just get like just the large stone and nothing else, you can still make good work if you have like any buff cards to throw on him, right? Obviously, you know, you're looking at Formless Child here and you're going, oh, what if you just use Formless Child on your Legion of Wax? Stop. Stop thinking that. <laughs> Cut it out. Don't do it. Um, more realistically, something like, uh, not Rage, because Rage will not apply to the other unit. Something like, uh, what's the, what's the, was it Razor Sharp Vines or something? Yeah, or yeah, Razor Sharp Edge does help. Razor Sharp Edge, yeah, that'll help because that's an enhancement. Any enhancement's good for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it has to be specifically an enhancement. Yeah, but Legion of Wax is really good. Like, it's really... This is a game-winning card on its own. With just a little help, this does a lot for you in a lot of situations. And that's all there really is to it. But I want you to understand here... This is this is probably the biggest piece of advice I could impart on you about this game. You may be sitting here and you may be like, Oh, that's like... So he spawns like four little goons, right? Oh, I could just be like... Oh, what about if I put a Wickless behind him? What if... I, like one of the Wickless Barons or one of the Wickless Tycoons? What about if I put a Devourer of Death behind him? Stop it. He doesn't need help. Just let him, let yeah. him do his thing. You don't need to go for this. Like, maybe, maybe, maybe put a Devourer of Death behind him, but even then it's like, ah, I've lost my entire Legion of Wax, but it's okay because my Devourer of Death is here to do, I mean, crunch the numbers here, 200 damage. So we're safe. Seraph isn't going to kill me now. It, it's, it's, I would even say, like, while that might be cute, even in that case, like, you, the space. Yeah, the, the space. space is an issue still, too. Just, you know, Legion of Wax stands well enough on his own with just the two big shop upgrades. You just want to force those two big shop upgrades on him. You want to reroll for him. You don't want to give him anything else. You want to get large stone, you want to get multi-strike. He will single-handedly win you the game if you give him large stone multi-strike. Uh, well, he'll single-handedly kill Seraph. The other problems you have to answer yourself. How do you kill heavies? R burnout Rector. How do you kill backline? That's Melting's biggest trouble. And that's it. That's all I have to say about Legion of Wax. Would you like to say Ooh, more? One, one tiny thing I want to point out about Legion. Uh -huh. One tiny thing right. is that in combat, if the big legion is going to die, it will not give you info about uh, the rest of your units as far as how much HP they will remain with yeah. afterwards. So this is to keep in mind. It's hard. You have to, you know, do some real number crunching to figure out if you're in a relentless combat or something, yeah, uh, you... how much your legion might uh, live by. Oh, it's not in a relentless because it either live or die. But uh, it's hard to figure out in a normal combat how much your uh, splits are taking damage. Right. So, yeah, he's a... Doing math, nerd. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a complex boy. Final card of the reviews. Re-energy, spell, deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to 10 times the number of friendly unit deaths this battle. Memento Mori. Eh, it's okay. It's the card you use to kill a spell weakness. <laughs> yeah, this is the one in Melting, I guess. I, I would say in Melting, it's like the best one that they have access to for the spell weakness deck, but yeah, it's, uh, it's expensive. It is expensive. It is it's, three energy. You need, you need, I don't know, 10 to 20 units to kill a frontliner with this. Yeah, depending then, on where you are in the game. Yeah, so it, it's it, it costs three, and you also have to have units die before you play it. So I don't, I don't, I don't like it very much. Yeah, it's but... it's just okay. I think that with with the proper amount of setup, this card can do a lot of work for you. However, you know, I would say lot. good permafrost target because you can then just keep it in hand and wait until all your units die. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I feel like Legion of Wax would would have been a better card to end on because I really have nothing to say about Memento Mori other than it's okay. It kills frontline sometimes if you have the numbers for it. Mm -hmm. Good to combo with like an endless unit who's dying a ton. Because then it'll just pretty easily pop enemy heavies for you. Yeah. That's it. Anything else you want to add? No. All right. I think that brings us to the end. Overall, uh, the rares for melting are variant. Yeah. Some of these are good, and some of these are incredible, and some of them are awful. Yeah. I would. I would say that like. It's kind of surprising, but I, I would say most of these are, like, not reliant on playing Burnout. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of strange, because we talked a lot in, like, the in the comments and uncomments how, like, it's like, these are good with Burnout. These are, like, okay outside of that, or just trash. 
Yeah, and this is like this nothing. one. This one is like it's like Wickless recruitment requires you to be in burnout or at least have burnout rector. Other than that, and then I guess a like wax and spike too, obviously. But other than that, like you don't need to be playing burnout to take any of these. Yeah, it's weird. Mm -hmm. I agree. But yeah, like I, the thing is, I don't. I often think to myself, like, man, melting remnant is kind of weird, right? It's like, how do I, how do I ever really do anything too crazy to Seraph? And then I remember every now and then it's like, I'll, I'll be in the middle of going, like, how do I ever win this run? Legion of Wax. Yeah. Maybe one of the best rare units in the game, and so is Bounty Stalker. They're great. Yeah, Bounty Stalker requires you to. Ha I, I would say actually. Bounty Stalker requires you to have like ways to bring it back before I'm willing to take it, whereas Legion of Wax, I need it early enough to make sure I can get the things for it, because it requires upgrades to become good. Whereas Bounty Stalker requires cards like you free to play to bring it back from death. Yeah. I was gonna say let's do a best and worst epic in the game, but that's hard to do. Like it's maybe, maybe you know maybe we can come back on the uh, the relic video with starting with that. Yeah, maybe, but like it's it's just it's just hard because they're also like the situational worst rares are like oh, but this is really good in this exact situation, it's right? Probably one of the spikes. I don't know. I think it might be formless child. No, I, I like formless child more than the spikes. Like at least at least worst case scenario, the formless child bring you back like a buff train steward. Yeah, but like it, but you don't have to pay two energy for the spikes. You can get rid of it from your deck for free. That is true. That is true. It's a good point. But well, what about that real buff train steward? <laughs> I, I guess I didn't think of the 45-8 train steward. With multi-strike and damage shield too. Yeah, with multi-strike. Alright, I suppose that's that then. That's all of the main factions on the books. Hooray. Hooray. Would you like to say Woo. goodbye, Cranberry? Yes, I would like to say goodbye. Goodbye, and thank you for watching all 18 hours of these card reviews. <laughs> yeah, this one was also two hours. Oh, okay, you know, maybe... <laughs> I, 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 I'm lying, but I promise the next one will be shorter. I mean, it will be shorter because there's less to do. I'm sure we can extend it. Yeah, you know what? Next video is actually going to be 10 hours. Hell yeah. All right. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for the support on these videos. They've been a ton of fun. Uh, we have at least the Relic and Clanless cards to do still. So this is not the end. However, this is the end of the main clan card reviews. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button into orbit. Uh, subscribe for more, and we will see you in the next review. R ring the bell. Ring, ring the bell, and goodbye. Have a good day.